My name is Gianluca Epzana. I was an Italian by birth, and I became an American by choice. Our lives and freedoms are in danger. This is not a dream. If you're listening to this broadcast, you are the resistance. Welcome to Love, Guns, and Freedom. We're not afraid. Here we go, guys and girls. You're listening to Love, Guns, and Freedom with Luca Epzana on KTalks 1340 AM and all United States do the FM network. Another Sunday, another show. When I started the show, the idea of how I wanted to somehow, uh, let's say, organize it or produce it, or more important, the final goal, let's put it this way, wasn't just about to have great guests. Yes, I think we have, uh, at least I always try to work very hard to get guests, you know, even, even guests that normally they wouldn't go to a local radio show like mine, with my, you know, limitations. I mean, I was very humble to find people like, for example, I don't know, Mr. William Beamy, that is a, one of the first NSA whistleblower that normally goes around, you know, big networks, and he, I don't know, came to me. I was grateful. But for me, the real more important guest, it is not just the big book author or the big conspiracy theorist or, you know, the famous person. No, at the end, it's you, the listener, the person that, uh, you know, like me, I'm an average guy, uh, who wants to do things a little bit more above the average, wants to try to do incredible things. That's, for me, what, how we're going to take this country back. When the average person, they want to start to decide is to step it up, and they want to do things out of the average. And the first thing you can do is speak up. Exactly. Not being afraid to say what you think. And that's exactly what's the final goal and the purpose of the show, that everybody's allowed to come and talk. And if you want to ask me questions, you're more than welcome. If you have something you don't like about me, as I said, you're more than welcome. Honestly, I like that because that also makes the show more interesting. Only thing I say, keep the mom, stay the mom, you know, don't mention the mom and uh, stay away from my private life. That's all I ask. But when it comes to the public life, my political life, I welcome you in everything, seriously. And I, as anything goes, because this is also the spirit of the show. We have complete freedom of speech. Now, there is a lady who is uh, from, uh, who she's from uh, Lake Havasu City, that I had the pleasure to meet during the nasty, very nasty, <laughs> Mojave County campaign, especially the one for uh, county sheriff. And for me, it wasn't nasty at all. I, after all, I was just, uh, I always very, keep it very professional. It's just another campaign, you know. We try to do our part, you know. We pick and choose the people that we think they're the right for the job. And then at that point, whatever, the voters will decide whatever they want. And I said, oh, with that, fine. You know, that for me and my attitude. Of course, we can always do better. But I always want to give the opportunity to the people that now they've been elected to do the right thing. Now, when it comes down to this lady, she was very funny. You know, she made an incredible little YouTube making fun of me, my accent, my coffee, and everything else. And normally people say they get mad. Honestly, I was very pleased and humble. I said, wow, that's a cool little video she took. Uh, she took and whatever was with it, a lot of effort to, to make this sort of, a, you know, let's say, uh, almost comedy, you know, in a way political, you know, sarcasm. It was great. I like it. So I brought her on the show. Then we started meeting each other on the air. More important, excuse me, on the air on Facebook. And I think she's a cool lady. She has a lot of great ideas. Sometimes we agree. Sometimes we don't, we don't agree. But, you know, we have agreed on many things. But regardless, today is her show. Or at least she's the one that she will have also questions about me. Because sometimes, you know... I like pretty much ask your opinion, but maybe she wants sometimes to know a little bit about my story, and she wants to know a little bit more about immigration from a point of view of a former legal immigrant that I was. Uh, here we go. This, her name is Chris Marie from Lake Avasu. Chris, are you there? I am here. First of all, tell me, did you fall asleep with my intro? Because normally I'm pretty good at that. I can... <laughs> Give you a good sleep. No, I did not fall asleep yet. Okay. Uh, but you know, uh, I think we're good right now. I'm still awake. Good, good. I didn't get any Zana coffee yet. I didn't pick it up at the uh, I know. Guns. Lisa, <laughs> I, I know. so terrible. I just I, remembered it. And I called you the other day, and I will still, you know, try to get you one day. Uh, next time I come to... Uh, by the way, do you have a CCW? 
Do I have what? A CCW, an Arizona CCW. Uh, I do not have an Arizona CCW, okay. no. Forget about that. Even better. I have a free gun safety class, okay? That it will be happening in Lake Havasu at the Havasu Guns. Exactly. Let me tell you exactly the day. Uh, we're talking about March the 18th. The 18th. March 18th? Oh, I don't think so. Oh, what happened to that day to you? I'm going to probably be doing a fundraiser that day. Oh. But we don't, yeah, no, no, we're no. going to try to do a no, fundraiser for I'm the sorry. Humane Society. No, no, so, no, 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 I'm for sorry. For the doggies and the kitties and any other little fur my babies fault. that come in there my that fault. need a home. My fault, my fault. No, the 18th, that's another class I have in Kingdom. I'm getting crazy here. It's going to be Sunday the 12th. Sunday the 12th of March. Sunday the 12th? Okay. Free gun safety class in Lake Havasu at the Havasu Gun Shop. And uh, it's free, of course, as the title says, because, you know, I'm sponsoring it. And uh, I would like to have you there, even if you don't have a gun, even if you don't like guns. But it, since one day you may be in contact with a gun, uh, maybe somebody may bring it at uh, the school place or at uh, the work place where you work. You never know. At least, exactly. At least you have the knowledge how to be safe around the gun, how to, in case you have to neutralize a gun, to unload it correctly. And more important, if somebody's doing something stupid, say, hey, you stupid idiot, I know the rules. Don't do that. Okay? So that's it's, right. So that's the spirit of the class, and it's very good. I had an incredible <clears throat> uh, class just last Saturday, and the people, they were so excited. Uh, so I wanted like, to invite you there, because I still have this oh, thank you. Zanna coffee waiting for you, this bag of coffee, <laughs> before it gets too old, you know, and then it's going to be pretty much useless. And I'm joking. I always keep my coffee very fresh. We we, we uh, roasted every other week, okay? But anyway, Lisa, so I hope you can, I can see you there. That would be great if you can, okay? That would be nice, yes. Perfect. We will try. All right, so that's done. Now, back to us. I know that you have questions. I know that today you want to talk about several topics. And as I said, on this show, any topic goes, you know, seriously. And, uh, and I enjoy that part because I don't even know what you're going to ask me, really. And, and that's fine. I like that. Oh, you're in trouble. Exactly. As I said, don't leave my mom alone, okay? That's all I ask you. Go ahead. You, you, you lead the uh, way. What? No, it's good. It's good. As Go a matter of fact, you know, um, it's amazing to uh, have this opportunity to use your show to actually speak out and, t and speak out on topics and not feel that you're being um, judged or – and even if you are being judged, you get to have the – you know, people get to say what they want to say, and you really do give a, a free perspective, um, and you're not trying to uh, steer people away from uh, what they're trying to say. And if you have input or other information, you are good at, at uh, sharing that as well. So I do appreciate that. You're welcome. I think we were talking – about a week and a half ago about uh, President Trump's ban on uh, certain countries and um, and just closing up the borders right now. And uh, I, I think that was, you know, tremendous that he did that. Now, are there some innocent people that are going to fall through those cracks and it's going to severely affect them temporarily? Yes, but it was a temporary thing. It's not a permanent thing. Um, I think that a lot of people... Uh, American citizens, it blows my mind how, you know, coming from Boston, Massachusetts, I, I don't know if you know that I was born and raised yes. uh, in Boston, Massachusetts, and I come from, I am a second, I, second or third generation, uh, second generation Irish, and I think second, second generation Italian wow. on my mother's side. So, uh, and my family comes from Im immigrants. As a matter of fact, I am related to Miles Standish, the captain of the Mayflower. Wow. Um, and my uh, mother's side of the family comes from Naples, wow. and they immigrated here. And, and also uh, my family from Ireland also immigrated here. And they're all documented. Documented is the key word here at Ellis Island in New York City. Yeah, I, I, um, I, I, And you can find this in, through our genealogy, mm -hmm. through like Ancestry.com. And I believe now you can put in your DNA Yes. You and I could put in our DNA. We could probably be related at some point probably, through the Italian probably. side. We Wouldn't that be fine? We could be like, you know, I should be, we should Cuginos, do that. you know? Exactly. And you know what is funny? You know, that's what I really don't like when, uh, let's say, the media, they, of course, all control and part of this plan to try to make us look all in the same 
pot or we are all the same. We are all immigrants. No, we are not all immigrants. Okay? There are immigrants means it's somebody who start the process from a legal point of view, respecting the laws of the country where they want to try to immigrate. And I remind mm -hmm. that that it's not a right. You were I wasn't born there here. You were born here. But Correct. Okay, I wasn't born here, so I cannot Correct. say, oh, my God, I must come here, you must accept me. No, it's called, mm -hmm. like, tomorrow I come to your home, and, you know, maybe you want to invite me, maybe not, it's still your home. Normally, what happens at your home? You have a lock door. I have to think about that. Yeah, we have to see, you know, I'm going to eat all your fridge, is going to be gone <laughs> if I come into your home. And th but my point, you know, exactly, you know, you have a door. You might eat all my pasta. Exactly, you have a door, <laughs> you have a wall, you have, a, you have some sort of... A, perimeter maybe you have also a fence and you decide who wants to who can come to your home because it's your Correct. home same story a country you know a country without borders a country without uh, some sort of sovereignty that we can decide who, who is welcome here or not it's not about you know you like it or not it's about it's our right as americans uh, that uh, we have that tall sort of, because there are seven billion people out there let's be straight more than 7 billion people around the world. What if That's everybody correct. wants to come here and say, hey, I want to come to America. Everybody wants to come to America, or at least mm -hmm. they used to. I mean, this country would not survive, and that's what we're getting to. So the point is people, they forget, even people that, let's say, they are not immigrant, and they are just pro this uh, illegal immigration invasion, I call it. That's the way it is. Because when you are not it an really immigrant, is an invasion. It's an invasion. You know, don't call yourself an undocumented immigrant. No, you are an illegal alien. That's the term. You're breaking the law. Exactly. It's exactly. The, by the way, it's the term written by Congress. That it's a law. And definition is somebody who, let's say, does not respect immigration laws and comes here. It is not an undocumented uh, immigrant. It is an illegal freaking alien. Okay. And that's as simple as that coming from a former immigrant. But now they make mm -hmm. us look, you know, the day without immigrants. Now, wait a second. Don't mix apples with crap, okay? Two different things. Mm -hmm. The apple, the crapple pie is not going to work. One is crapple apple. Crapple pie. Exactly. <laughs> you know, immigrants. I don't like crapple. I love apple pie, but I don't like crapple exactly. pie. But they try to mix us up. I mean, so much that I tell you the Good journey one. how it starts, okay? For a regular person, uh, it normally starts at an embassy, okay? Unless you have some special invitation from the president or from the State Department, some special passport, a regular person from around the world must start their journey at an embassy. Then, then they may have a visa because maybe they have relatives. For example, now I'm trying to bring my mom here. Very difficult, by the way. Very difficult. And I am a naturalized American. You have no idea how many loops and paperwork and hundreds of dollars of stamps and crap I'm paying. But these are the rules. I didn't make them, and we tried to go through. But what really disappoints me, it is not just uh, the system that is difficult. No, okay, that's okay. That's the way it is. But there are two sets of rules and reality for two sets of people. There are the chosen ones, and then there are the idiots like ourselves, mostly Europeans, that unfortunately now we have to go through very much of a lot of hardship to come here to America. I mean, mm -hmm. for example, you see these refugees, the way they want to call them, Nobody vetted them. They, they, even FBI said there is not really any vetting system. We don't know who they are. They don't even come with a passport. <clears throat> Meanwhile, people like my mom, for example, uh, one of the questionnaires we had to answer, how many times did you change address since you were 16? Now she's 72, for God's sake. Think about right. any, And if you say something right. is wrong, technically you're perjuring, okay? I mean, think mm -hmm. about insanity. So anyway, let me shut up. But now you lead the way. Tell me, ask me anything you want. Go ahead, Chris. Well, you, you made a, a very, you made a, I would like to touch, go back on a, a couple of sentences that you just spoke about, about uh, the, uh, the refugees that are not being vetted. And even President Assad from Syria says that these people, he can't even vet them. Yeah. And because there's so much fraud uh, committed in his country and in other uh Muslim caliphates that are getting fake documentation to leave their said countries and they're paying whatever little bit of money they have left in their pockets for this doc this fake documentation. Yes. And it cannot be properly vetted. I don't care who you are in the FBI. I don't care. And as a matter of fact, I have friends who have 
who have, uh, a couple of my friends have kids who have graduated and now in the FBI, working for the FBI. Wow. And they will tell you they cannot properly do their job because they are, it, it's just not feasible. We don't even have enough FBI people to cover the amount of people that they want to bring in yeah. to do those jobs. So, I mean, you have more people working in the IRS than you do in the FBI. It's true. It is Taxing true. the American people. Yeah, so we get You know, they hired 17,000 people for the IRS yeah. just to enforce Obamacare. It's true. And so these are facts. And so any other American that doesn't want to agree with me can go and look up these statistics themselves. They can actually call the IRS and find out. Uh, you know, what their hiring freeze is or how many people they hire. It's all Freedom of Information Act. You can get all this information. It's not something I'm just pulling out of my hat. Yeah. These are things that I've researched myself. Um, you know, our country, uh, our former leader, uh, President Obama and Secretary of State Clinton have done some things of <laughs> – I mean, I, I don't even want to get into it because it's just going to be another argument with other people. But oh, no, they've done some wait, things wait, wait. like argument, Benghazi and argument. whatever, and they've they've it's done good. things that are illegal. Fact, and they the things that are going on in Syria right now yeah. are because of what Clinton and Obama caused. Yeah. They have funded the rebels with guns and money through funneled through Saudi Arabia, and that's why President Assad has the mess he has on hand because. He's an independent state who has oil that we want. Yes. That's what happened in Libya. Yes, yes. And that's why Gaddafi is dead. Exactly. And people don't want to accept that. Exactly. They want to be ignorant to that. They want to be spoon-fed by the media. They're oh, no. spoon-fed media babies. They're not ignorant. They're not ignorant. They're just cowards. They don't care hypocrites. to look outside of the box. They think whatever is said on whatever news channel, that has to be true. But when you go listen to Al Jazeera, they're saying exactly what you and I are talking about right now. For me, it's... You know, go it's, listen to Al Jazeera for a day. Christian. You know, if you really are into the Muslim culture, go listen to Al Jazeera. They really do tell the news. Chris, you know what is sad? Um, These people, uh, in general, they are not ignorant. Some, of course, they are. Mostly, they are hypocrites, and they don't care about the truth. All they care that they think whatever their guy or their girl is doing, even if he's doing wrong, just because it advances their cause, we don't care. And that's, for me, worse than everything, because, you know, I don't care about parties. I bash Republicans. I bash everybody that is mm -hmm. deserves Yeah, you're, you're not a party you know, person. You know, I know that. Th this is true, you know. If I was a Democrat, I would feel so bad. After, you know, these people, they were somehow exposing Bush for illegal wars, Afghanistan. We know there were no weapons of mass destruction, uh, Iraq, and all that fraud, and all these trillions of dollars, and of all these uh, hundreds of thousands, you know, no million of, mm -hmm. million of uh, poor civilians, that they got stuck in that hell. And, of course, our soldiers, that they gave their life, and probably they also gave their brain. And then they were complaining about that, and I was with them, and at the time I was a Republican. Now, mm -hmm. I would like to ask, where are these uh, Democrats that they were somehow against uh, all these fraudulent wars, and they didn't say a word about, you know, Libya, as you were saying, and then Syria, mm -hmm. and then all the other things they've done. I mean, now Ukraine tried to go, Obama tried to create a, this sort of a Cold War with Russia. I mean, this is Correct. insanity, insanity. So, hypo hypocrisy, and more important, also I say, cowardice, because they don't want to even be... Uh, at that point, they are pretty much like afraid even to open their mouth, I really believe. But anyway... Well, I'd ahead. like to give a hypothetical situation of what's going on in Syria because they're trying to make President Assad into some kind of, uh, you know, like he, like like uh, Saddam Hussein was killing all of his people and, yeah. you know, the genocide. Yes. Uh, Assad is not a genocidal maniac. He's not. Now, have people died because his forces have to fight the rebels and the crossfires have killed people? Yes, and it's horrible. And you don't think this man has to struggle with that every single day? I'm not saying he's perfect, but I've listened to President Assad through interviews, and he has said clearly that he is not doing this, that he is, has to employ his troops to fight against these rebels, the Mujahideen and everything else that is out there. And the guns that they're using are from our country. Where did they get them from? Oh, Lisa, I was Where did they get about the money to buy them? Two years How? ago. We created ISIS, and that's what people don't understand, and they think that I'm some kind of conspiracy theorist. No, well, it's... where did you think ISIS came from? Oh, my gosh. This is so big. They it's didn't so... come out of thin air. It is so evident. Even mainstream news, even CNN two years ago, and many other 
evident document from the Pentagon. I mean, there are so much evidence. Right. That and is, they don't want to go back to those news articles now because that's fake news, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. No, no, this is But uh, when you, when you think about what President Assad is doing and think about this, let's say, let's use President Obama for a second when he was in office. Let's say, you know, the militant militia, we have that militant militia that, you know, uh, or any kind of militant group now like Black Lives Matter or the KKK or whatever we have in this country. We do have some bad people here. I'm not saying we don't. Um, you know, I, I firmly believe that these groups are formed to create trouble for us. But let's just say those, those uh, uh, Minutemen militia were to, you know, uh, start to get bigger and bigger and decide to invade Montana uh -huh. because nobody's up there. <laughs> And they just start, you know, let's say Montana is Aleppo. For, you know, use Syria as Aleppo yes. versus Montana. Okay, Montana is pretty remote. Nobody's really there. And these rebels go up there and start trouble up there. Yes. Well, the police come in, and it's too big for them. They can't fight them by, them, by themselves. So now the president has to get involved, and he sends over troops. Now the troops are there, and they're telling them, knock it off, knock it off. Well, these rebels say, screw you, and they start shooting their guns and their artillery and whatever else. Yes. And wh whoever's funding them, by the way, there's somebody funding these, this group, but whoever's funding them, it could be, let's say, another country. Let's say Mexico is funding this group to start this trouble on our you know, property here. Mm -hmm. What is President Obama supposed to do? Of course he's going to send troops in. Of course there's going to be some little miniature war going on in whatever town of montana i don't know billings let's say billings montana and of course people are going to die but is that president obama's fault no no and he has to he has to stop it he has to that's what's happening in syria and then syria requested the help of russia because we weren't we lied to them we are we're not there for syria we're only there for the oil that's it exactly and when syria didn't join opec that's the problem right there, and people don't want to address that either. Exactly, and this is so sad, you know, because it's so even a, even a, even a kid can understand that. Okay, first mm -hmm. of all, it's none of our business. Okay, we are not Syria, exactly. Syria is not our next door. Nobody made us God and the police of mm -hmm. the world, and our soldiers are supposed to protect our borders and our rights. Not to and if God is trying to protect His people, yet His people exactly. are getting killed. Exactly, and so, we're causing it. We're the problem, and we know that we're, we're, we're encouraging uh, these. These and, rebels. I know this. I and think funding is, these rebels and and you know giving them the, and arming these rebels with the, our u, artillery with the with everything. United States government on it. With everything. I mean, with if everything. you go look at the artillery, it has the United States government written across hey, it. Are, Where did they get it from? McCain. There are proofs and photos of Senator McCain there uh, mm -hmm. hugging and having a party time and drinking coffee and be you know gay with coffee and cookies and whatever with these rebels is there i mean there are so much evidence if people really are serious all they have to do is just go out there and they can find everything they want but let me just play this it's almost funny because it's like a sleep probably but whatever there's much more than this let's play this listen to this idiot was moving too slowly but the fall of ramadi has galvanized the iraqi government so with the additional steps i ordered last month we're speeding up training of isil forces including volunteers from sunni tribes in anbar province one second. Let me play one last part. ISIL forces, including volunteers, I ordered last month, were speeding up training of ISIL forces, including volunteers from Sunni tribes <laughs> in Anbar province. I mean, even the idiot that is, you know, of course, uh, <laughs> they can keep their mouth. Sometimes, you know, when you know the truth is true, they, you can always fake it, okay? So, but this is almost past that point. The point, if you really believe, as it, I would like to talk now, especially to the Democrats, okay? that they normally they were against these sort of uh, wars, anti-wars. And I'm mm -hmm. with you, okay? Wars is really bad. It normally it's for the bankers. It's not even for anything else. Correct. It's okay? a money-making, profitable it's, deal, and, exactly. And, 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 many and I'm against it, too. I don't like them either. Yeah, and, you know, the only wars is justified when somebody invades you, okay? That's it. Right, uh, right. That's different. And, you know, and I also had on my show several, for example, um, army people, I mean, military people, for example, a couple of weeks ago, I had uh, a retired commander of the U.S. Navy. I mean, a guy that, you know, he, he took seriously, and he was a professional, and uh, he was a commander. He was even just a private. Guess what? Mm -hmm. Came to the same conclusion. And we talk always about the general, that uh, butler, that is one of the most famous and most decorated U.S. general in the Marine Corps, 
that, of course, is that, during the 30s, he exposed with a book, War is a Rocket, what type of, uh, you know, plan they had to use our soldiers, our flag in our name, to go out and start these wars. There were no other things but just for profit, for this sort of a plan of, a, you know, whatever corporation they want to get, they will get it with our soldiers. But my point is, where are these people? Now, we should be united as Americans, Democrats, Republicans, I don't care which party. we all been somehow <laughs> bamboos. we all been taken advantage. They lied to us when the Republicans, they were believing the crap. Now the, Rep the Democrats, they became the new neocons. That's very sad. The Democrats, mm -hmm. they, they went along with all these wars. And look at, for example, the poor bastard of, of uh, Libya. Uh, you know, they call him dictator. Guess what? It's their business. The guy, by the way, was much better than many other politicians we have, for sure. But my point, you know... Well, Gaddafi was not a, was not a sweetheart, that's for oh, sure. No, but like no. you said, it wasn't our business. No, not um, our business. And I had a friend, my friend's dear husband worked over in Libya with no problems until Benghazi happened. And he barely got out of there with the wow. skin of his teeth and his life. And so, you know, um, this, you know... This Benghazi was a very serious, serious thing, uh, and I think Chris Stevens knew more than he should have. Exactly. And to have Marines there with no weapons just blows my mind, not even a hand pistol. Those Marines had nothing and leave them, uh, to protect uh, themselves. And we know very well nothing. what happened. They left them there die. They want them to die. And, you know, there is no how many times we need to hear it that they, we could rescue the soldiers they wanted to come there. Sigonella and Sicily so close. They could have been right. there in two hours, two hours, exactly, and less. And then we know that was exactly planned. And what is said, as I said, you know, I'm not just uh, disgusted with these politicians, wherever they are, uh, that they plan all this. What I'm disgusted is with part of the American people, in this case, mostly Democrats. It's a denial. They yeah. don't want to believe it. They you don't want to believe that that there's corruption in our government, and they think that our government has our best interest in heart, and they don't. I know. I don't care whether you're Republican, Democrat, Independent atheist, Catholic, Muslim, whatever you are, and you're not, born here, we have, we have our government that wants to divide us because they know at 330 million people, us exactly. united, we can overthrow our government very but, easily. But we don't even need to overthrow united. it. All we need to do is and say, no, it's they not, also know that yeah. we don't, because the government was, the way our forefathers set it up, we're a republic, number one. Everyone keeps calling our, us a democracy. We uh -huh. are not a democracy. Exactly. We are a republic, folks get with the program and understand what kind of government we are and why our forefathers set up our government this way was to protect the people from the government, not the government from the people. And right now, this government thinks it needs protection from the people. And maybe they might be right because we're tired. We're fed up. We don't want the way the government is running us anymore. We don't want a license to get married. Any one of us, gay, straight, whatever you are, I don't think I should have to have a license to go marry who I want to marry and be who I want to be with. And I the agree. only reason why they do that is to generate revenue and for taxation purposes only. They're trying to make us a corporation and a partner, a business partnership, which needs to be dissolved in a court of law. I, if I don't want to be with you anymore, I don't need a court of law exactly. to decide that for me unless it escalates to that point. And I choose to make it there, to take it there. Uh, you know, I think, but uh, if I want to get a divorce, I should be able to get a divorce without the government involved. It, it's not even about I the don't money. I the government involved in my bathroom. If exactly. I want to go take a pure poo-poo, yeah. you know, it is like... it's none of your business what I'm doing in that stall. And if Caitlyn Jenner wants to come in and use the stall next to me so she can do her business, that's her business now. Please, please, you know, um, me, I, me... I don't believe the government, the government is getting too much involved in our lives. It's yes. too much. Yes. And everybody seems to want that. And I don't get it. They want more government. Well, Why, people? Why do you want more government? You know, what I you was, should want more freedom. Chris, Chris, let me tell you something. First of all, one thing I want to tell you. I don't even think anymore, for example, the license, it's about the, the money that they make or whatever. It is about control. It's about all control. Exactly. It's a control thing, too. Exactly. Because, you know, at the end of the day, think about it. You know, I was studying that a few years ago. Uh, the real movement of uh, the license, especially for the marriage, it started to happen when, after the Civil War, they wanted to control interracial marriages. That was Correct. The, so they didn't want to have black people getting married with white. Simple as that. Mm -hmm. Okay, talking about, yeah, they fought for, for the black. You know, they were still slaves after all because they could even marry with their, their woman or their man, okay, that they wanted. Right, so, right. And the same story then at that point was adopted for everybody else because the idea is 
at this point, you're not free. Because you said, it was e- like you said, it becomes control. Once they yeah. controlled one group of people, which was everybody. the black people, after the black people were no longer slaves, they figured, well, we still need to keep control over them at some point. Exactly. And that was one way. And then they said, well, let's, let's slowly integrate that into everybody. And that's also another thing you were saying, something very important. The word democracy, it is exactly the brainwashing that they be, we've been, uh, let's say, been abused as Americans mm-hmm. the last at least 30, 40 years. And you see mm-hmm. from, you know, President, for example, uh, former President Bush, and then you, of course, so you know, you know, Trump. Excuse me, Trump. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Obama. Every time they can, but Bush, Republicans, Democrats, doesn't matter. The last 40 years, they love this word democracy. Why? Because democracy is exactly the antithesis of what's supposed to be our republic, where the, exactly. right, the right of the individual they're always protected, and people forget mm-hmm. that. You say, you know, when you have 51 percent of the people that somehow you can buy or you can corrupt, or you can brainwash, because after all, people are brainwashed. Look, they can go, mm-hmm. just watch TV all day long, you become an idiot. So they can control mm-hmm. the masses. When they control 51% of the people, that 51% can say how much money you can keep, what type of house you can live in, what type of marriage you can have, what type of smoke you can smoke, what type of food mm-hmm. you can eat, everything. All they need mm-hmm. to do is put everything at the polls, and that's how freedom dies. That's how Greeks, mm-hmm. Greece died. And what kind of medicine to have. Exactly. And what kind of, the, exactly. Everything is controlled. You know, the idea was exactly. supposed to be a republic means that the right of the individual, they are unalienable. And unless you infringe on somebody else's rights, you're supposed to do whatever you want. And even 99% of the people don't like what you are or what type of sex you want to have or what type of drinks you want to have. They it's can, none of my business. And exactly. None, should, and it should be none of the government's business either. I mean, none look, of anybody's business. I mean, look at now in Arizona, for example, okay? I mean, uh, or even, for example, there was a, a law that they just passed in uh, Nevada a few months ago, a proposition. 51% of the people was uh, somehow brainwashed enough to create this new gun control law that now supposedly is in effect in Nevada. Just because 51% decide, hey, you don't need those rights. We're going to be sure that we can take care of that. That's wrong. Okay. And also mm-hmm. another thing, for example, I don't like the idea that, you know, I am pro um, legalization. I don't even, I don't want to call it legalization, decriminalization of marijuana. Okay. Because I believe it's a plant. I don't smoke it. I don't like it. But it is like for many people it could be like a glass of wine or even a medication, a natural medication. So mm-hmm. if you do it in the, in the safety of your own home, like I may drink now a glass of wine and I don't drive, you should be able to, to smoke whatever you want, okay? But mm-hmm. I, I hate the idea that something is supposed to be a right, the right to enjoy yourself, the right to cure yourself the way you want it, and to have a plant in your home, you must go through a process of democracy. That means uh, we must convince 51% of the people to say, hey, give us this right back. That's the scary part. Right. Because at the same time, they can say, 51% of the people tomorrow, you don't need to live in a house that is more than 1,000 square foot. Because we say so. It's the law. Think about how scary this democracy can be. Don't you think? Very scary. Yep. Very scary. And, and that's what I, you know, I'm a woman, and we've only had rights to vote for just about 100 years now. And... You know, I have a problem with the government being involved in a woman's rights to choose whatever she wants. Now, morally, I might not agree with you on what you choose as a woman, but don't expect my tax dollar or my money to pay for what you want to do to your body. Exactly. So if you want to have an abortion, lady, by all means, that's none of my business. What? I don't agree with it morally. What? I don't agree with it. But guess what? I shouldn't have to pay for it either. I, it's, that's a good start. And, I and think, the rest of the world shouldn't have to pay for your mistakes. Yeah. You want to make a mistake? Make a mistake, but do it on your diamond time. Don't do it on my diamond time. I agree. Okay? Because if I go and let's say I go and make a bad business deal tomorrow, let's say I lose, let's say I decide to go gambling and I lose 20000 on 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 number 13 black on the roulette. Yeah. And then I say, excuse me, Luke, I knock on your door. Excuse me. You need to give me $20,000 right now. And you're going to go, what? <laughs> Well, I just lost it on the on the roulette table, and uh, you know, according to our government, uh, I can go knock on someone's door and get my twenty thousand back. That's true. That's true. It's your fault now, Luca, that yes. I made that mistake. You need to pay up and pony up for my mistake because I need to pay my bills now, and that's it. Even though I did something, and you don't, let's say you don't like gambling, you say, well, you know, I'm not a gambler, Chris. That's not my problem. Yeah. Well, that's too bad. The government says because they made a law 
that all gamblers must, if they lose their money, you, if you make a certain amount of money, I can knock on your door and get my money from you. Right. They do that and with, the government uh, will levy whatever against you to make sure you pay me back. Right. They, do, they do that with the, That's exactly <laughs> what you're saying when you ask somebody to pay for some mistake you make. But at the same time, I don't understand these politicians, whether they're Democrat or Republican, saying what a woman can do to her, with her body. What? Can I say because something? if you're going to imprison a woman for an abortion, then you better imprison the man who knocked her up. Listen, Chris, I have an idea. Period end of discussion. Let, let me tell you something about this one. First of all, I agree the with you. The man better get knocked, be, better be in prison too, if it's going to be against the law. But there are laws. Listen, know, there are, Chris, let me tell you something. There are laws. First of all, you know, I say one thing. You're right. We should never be forced to pay our tax dollar to anything like that for starters. You know, honestly. Correct. That's I not a medical procedure. That's an that's a elective procedure. I, Just like. It's like saying you have to pay for my facelift because I don't like the way I look but, now, or I have to pay for a hair transplant for a guy. But, no, those are elective procedures. But, but, those but, are not necessary. Another thing, I also believe another thing too. Uh, you know, I believe in charity. I, I, you know, something mm -hmm. we do our, our love as a, as a human being, we want to help each I other. I agree too. And, yep. and when we can, I think normally the average human being does that. But when every time uh, the government try to force, even for a good cause. Uh, violence, because after all, it's violence. The moment that you don't pay your property taxes, and you will not leave when they give you the notice to leave. They will come with a SWAT team. So that's violence, okay, against you. Mm -hmm. So the point is, it's still a form of coercion. It's still a form of, mm -hmm. uh, let's say, uh, stealing from somebody to give it to somebody else. And at that point, regardless of the situation, I always believe that violence should never be used. But now, when we look into this, it's beyond that. I believe that life, you know, as much I, I, I respect, of course, the woman's body and uh, the she said, but this is more than no more her body. My humble opinion, maybe we disagree a little bit on this one. The, the being, the human being inside her body, he has no fault or she has no fault. Uh, I agree with you. you. Know, it's, it's, but it, he has a heart. But it's not yeah. your it's not your job to tell someone their morals. No, no, if they're truly no, no. a free country or a free no, no, person. But this is not moral. This is not You're moral. moral. No, no. Let me tell you, Chris, the moral, you know what it means? Moral that tonight I want to have sex with three women. That's moral. That's my lifestyle. Don't don't mess with me. Leave me alone. Or you want to, no, seriously. <laughs> and, and, you, and you may maybe want to have sex with three men. It's your business. That's moral. Ten men. That's, but nobody got hurt. You are over 18. The Patriots. Every, the whole team. No, yeah, I'm kidding. I mean, seriously, everybody's doing it out of free will. That's moral. You know, many people may say, oh, Mazzana, you are really an immoral person. Screw off. I don't care what you think about me and my morals, okay? It's my lifestyle. I don't do it in front of your face. I do whatever I want. But at this point, when a little being defenseless, okay, that cannot defend as a heart, as a brain, we know that feels also pain, and mm -hmm. he gets killed because that's what it is. He gets murdered, okay? And this is no more about moral. This is, the, in my opinion, that's called, in a book of law, it's called murder, first-degree murder, second-degree murder, or maybe if it's by accident it could be, you know, manslaughter, but the point is still murder. That's the difference. I understand also the well, humanity. murder still comes under morality, though. No, it no. does. No, wait. Murder, it's called a capital punishment. It's, this is not just morality. Well, because the government says so, but if well, we were to take the government again out of that... Well, Murder is still a moral issue, and it's in the Bible or whatever okay. religions Let's you know deem it to be listen, immoral and to me, be wrong. Mor maybe I'm not be philosophically deep as you are. Okay, moral means yeah. something that uh, you know becomes to mine, belongs to mine. Let's say uh, choice of lifestyle or who I am, and can be, but it does not. Let's say changes or infringe on, on somebody else's rights, and among those also the right to be alive, the right of life. Let's say, for example, mm -hmm. my morality is that I want to go around my home <laughs> naked. Okay, who cares? Nobody get killed, okay? I'm naked, I'm crazy, whatever. Or your moral is that, I don't know, you believe in, uh, uh, I don't know, what type of things people may don't like. It is still your right <laughs> because you do not do and force this to somebody else. I no? have a potty mouth. I swear a lot. Fine. People don't like that. Fine, but nobody dies. Okay. No, I mean, but okay. but uh, still, okay. the okay. thing is, is that okay. this we is come... something. Okay. Why are the women? Why isn't the man then who gets her pregnant being up? If if you're going to make the law, then make sure you include that man too. Okay, but listen to me. First of all, if you're going to make a law against a woman, there is no law against a woman. Uh, so far, my, but my... It, the, what they're trying to do is overturn Roe versus Wade. Okay. To make it illegal for a woman to have abortions. Listen to me. Uh, first of all, if somebody rapes somebody. 
There is a, there are many laws already. I in was the book. just going to go on that. Okay, they're going to be. We're going to go there. They, they, We're going to go there. Somebody rapes somebody. There is already a law in the criminal book. I don't care which state you are. You go, you go down. Okay. And by the way, it's talking about laws in our even Arizona state statutes. Okay. One of the uh, situations where you can use deadly force, and we are pretty good in this state about at least you know we can defend not just our life. But also we can mm -hmm. defend an innocent that somehow is being raped in the middle of being raped. Okay, so this rape, it's a serious... Yeah, but you can't take care of it after they've been raped. I understand, and I understand. You, you have to catch I understand. them in the act, which is I understand. pretty hard to do no, in most I understand, cases. and I, it is a very sad thing, Lisa. I can only even imagine, for example, I think, look, for example, the war time, you know, when uh, women, they were afraid because the soldiers, the winners arrive, and they rape all the women, and then they bear the children... Or the child of, of, of their invader, of the person that is the most Correct. disgusting human being on the face. I mean, all the oligon knows and what, so, what really can As a woman, to. I feel that men should not get to legislate on what goes on in a woman's body, period. Okay. End of discussion. You, you know, I, I can't, I, I'm not for, like, I don't like abortions either. I think babies are should live. But if somebody makes a choice to do that, Okay. I should first of all I don't think the rest of the population should have to pay for it or pay taxes for it, number one. Number two, that person has to deal with their their mistake for the rest of their life. You know, they have to live with that. This, you and I don't have to live with that. I understand. Okay? I understand. I understand. And there are also other options. I'm trying let me tell you one thing. There also I, other there options. are other other options, but if someone makes listen, there's a lot of people out there who kill themselves. That, and they make the final choice, yeah. and it's their mistake, and there's no coming back from that. But you can also adopt. You know, for example, if you don't like that. Of course, you and a lot of people have done that. You know, a I, lot of people have done that. But there's some people who just cannot go through with the process for whatever reason, and mental illness could be a factor. So many other things could be a factor, rape, incest. There's so many other things. And to force a woman, again, it's just more oppression for women, and I don't like it. Okay, that's fine. As I, say, as I, I, say, I, I feel it's oppression, and it's just another form of control. And I think that the government should stay out of a woman's body, period. And that's it. You okay. know, and I'm not, you know, the other thing, one thing I do not, what I think is wrong is that once, you know, these, these late-term abortions, now that is, that is a live child. Like, Well, it's a live child from beginning to, but now this child is, fully formed with all of their arms, legs, toes, you know, that's a, that's a baby. And you want to go eight months and then abort your baby? You're crazy. Well, three months, they already have that, the little hands. At that hands. point, I think that person should be forced to have the baby, give it up for adoption. That's it. Done deal. You're done. But oh. don't kill the baby. That's crazy. Well, as that's I said. Just, that's, that goes to, that, that to me is insanity. Please, you know. I, I really, it's such a it's such a hard subject to talk about as a woman. I can't imagine what some women have to go through, but some women use it as a as a daily form of abortion because it's it's taxpayer funded. Yeah. Maybe if it wasn't taxpayer funded, maybe it wouldn't happen all the time. Exactly. Maybe if the men who were impregnating the women had some liability put on them, mm -hmm. maybe then we wouldn't have so many abortions. Maybe if the morality was passed on and the and the liability was also passed on to the man impregnating the women and there was some kind of law against a man, you impregnate a woman who has an abortion, you're castrated. Boom, you're done. <laughs> okay. That's it. You're done. All right. You Lista. know, maybe a guy would think twice about getting a woman pregnant then. Well, Lisa, as I said, one thing. You know thing, what I mean? I, so to Chris, me, it's like, well, if you're going to have the laws for the women, well, you better have them for the guy too. Lista, and that's how I feel. If you're going to Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Let me something. Chris, let me one second get a break here too. The point for me is very simple. You're right. Our tax dollar should never be used to do things in general, in general, the abortion, for, of course, is one black and white, but also other things that they really, we do not agree. That's number one, because it's our money. But specifically, the abortion for me means killing an innocent person who has not the opportunity to defend itself, himself. That's the light. Now, we may have a little differences, maybe that, you know, you say eight months is Ooh. bad, and maybe you go, or oh, three months, that's something we can talk, that's fine. But at the end of the day, life is life. That's life the point. Is life and life I agree is, with li you. is life. I and agree I'm, and I'm sad and because there are many women, by the way, that they went through abortion. Then after their life changed forever. I mean, they became the biggest advocates. For example, of say, "Oh my God, wh what did I do?" And it's something only 
it's very hard to imagine uh, what you really can feel for the rest of your life when you did something like that. I can imagine for a moment because it's something grows inside you, and it's. I mean, let me give you an example. I supposed to be aborted, okay? My mother supposed not to have children because on top she could have been dead. When she, the doctor said to her. If you have a, a, a child, you may die. You have a medical condition. You may not be able to even continue your, 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 your gravidance, okay? Your pregnancy, excuse me. Uh, she went anyway. She said, you know what? Whatever. And I tell you, and I can imagine, you know, how easy it would have been at the time. On top, she was living in Germany when I was conceived. And uh, you know what? I could die. I have a good excuse. Why should I even continue this pregnancy? And I tell you, and I always think and talk with her about that. Today I'm here. I may be a pain in the ass, but I'm a human being. And uh, I tell you, and if it wasn't for my mom that she said, you know what, is a human being. I, I never can forget that. For me, it's very something, a very, very touchy topic, I'll tell you. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I don't know. Well, that's, you know, and for you, that's a personal uh, thing. And your mother endured a miracle in being able to have you and and be able to survive as well and not have her illness kill her. Um, that's a miracle in and of itself. So, you know, that's a great story. And um, and then you said we're going to break right now? No, no, no breaks. Is I, it, I, I, I is it the, the Zana Coffee breakout? Zana Coffee, I'm gonna, I can wait for you. Don't worry about it. You, you, you're my guest. Don't worry about that. But anyway, as I said, not everybody must go through, uh, you know, for example, their situation may be medical con situation like that, that the mother is really in, in uh, could, that, could be dead. And I'm not saying mm -hmm. that uh, people can say still, whatever, it's a little different. But people out there, they use abortion as, a con as some sort of, uh, you know, pill control, birth control. I mean, okay, mm -hmm. this, this week uh, we screw up too much. Guess what? Oh, we got pregnant. No problem. Let me go to the, uh, you know, to the clinic and we take care of that. That's, the, that's wrong. You know, use condoms. Well, yeah, and the reason why they're doing it is because they don't have to pay for it. Exactly. And and so maybe if we regulated the fact that you don't get them for free and you got to come up with the money or you end up having a baby in nine months. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And then we end up paying for the baby on welfare. But, you know, if they want to give the baby up for adoption, there's so many people out there. There's other options. There, there's the option for adoption, that's for sure. Okay. And so, um, but at the same time, I don't think it should be all put on the woman. I think the man should Fine. be held accountable then too. Let's change topic. And Let's change so, topic. This is something is important. We talk a little bit, but you know, sometimes you need to take a little bit of a break, otherwise we go crazy. It's very serious stuff. Yeah, we're going to pass. So yes, uh, tell me something else. I know you have questions for me or anything you want to. I ask do. Yeah. Now go we ahead. we just we uh, now I just learned a little bit more about you. You weren't even born in Italy. You were born in Germany. You were conceived. No, oh, no, you were conceived in Germany. I was conceived in Germany. My mother, my father was studying. Um, Latin, uh, he was becoming a professor of Latin, believe it or not, in Germany. He was mm -hmm. doing his degree, master degree. And my mother was there, I'll play him out, and I was conceived there. But then, of course, so they came back to Rome, and I was born in Rome. So that's a little bit so about it. you were me. born in Rome, okay. Yes. Because so, at first, I thought maybe you were born in, in Germany, and then no, they went no. back to Italy. No, no, I was um, born. Okay, so you, you were born in Italy, and... When were you born? Do you mind me asking? Well, normally I don't give all these details. I was born, let's put it this way. Uh, many, many moons ago. <laughs> I, oh, my age is fine. That's not a secret. I many, many you, espressos ago. Many, I many... am 1968. That's my class, okay? 1968. Okay. I am exactly right now 48 and uh, getting to 49. So you know my age. That's okay. Not, that's not a secret. I put it on my Facebook. Okay, so way. you were born. You, you so you were born in, in Rome in, in the sixties. Six. I didn't even need an exact date, but you were born in the sixties, late late 60s. late sixties, very late sixties. Late sixties. Yeah, don't push too and much. And <laughs> when you you lived in Rome your whole life, or did you live in other parts of Italy, or did you live in any other country? Well, or I grew up. Tell uh, me about your journey. Okay, give you my quickly my journey. I don't know why people really care about it, but I'll tell you. I when I grew up. I've of course, my first part of my uh, childhood, I was in Anzio. Anzio is a little town about 40 miles from Rome that uh, is very famous for, first of all, was the hometown of Nero. And uh, other Roman emperors used to have their villas. Mm -hmm. And it's a nice uh, sea town on the Tyrrhenic Sea. And that's pretty much where my family also had businesses. And uh, I grew up there. Uh, then when I was 11, I left a uh, little town of Anzio. And, of course, I started to, my journey into boarding schools in Rome, exactly at Convito Nazionale in Rome. So I pretty much grew up my, 
from since I was 11 till my, you know, when I started to become a young man in boarding schools that was still in Rome. Then I went to Naples where I did my military academy school. And then finally I was able to escape from there. And I started to travel <laughs> around the world. When, what, what uh, decade did you decide to make your way to the United States? Well, the journey started exactly when I was in my 16, uh, 17. I always was fascinated about America. Uh, I, when I was always Spanish, because most of the time I was Spanish, especially in the military school. I never really had a chance to see outside. So I used to go to the library. People normally, Saturday and Sunday, they were able to get out for half day. And I was stuck there. So at least I was had access to libraries. And one day I somehow came along uh, across with the Declaration of Independence. And I said, wow, this is very interesting. And then I came across the Declaration to me, the Bill of Rights. And I was trying mm -hmm. to compare the United States Constitution, U the U.S., U.S., excuse me, the U.S. Constitution and Bill of Rights with the Italian Constitution and Bill of Rights mm -hmm. doesn't exist. I said, wow, this is kind of different. And then I started to really envision where want I go when I grow up, what part of the world I would like to find that somehow is closer to my ideals. Uh, since I was always a little rebellious, I never really uh, bowed down to anybody, and that's why I also got me in trouble in the military. Uh, I never liked the idea of, uh, let's say, nobilities, kings, princes, anything like that. And the idea always I wanted to say whatever I wanted to say, things in Italy you cannot do, because let's say if I say the Pope is an idiot, Guess what? Tomorrow I can be not just sued, but also arrested. If I say the Italian president is a, is, a, is a jackass, for sure I can be spending five years in jail. So I didn't fit in that profile, and I say, you know what? I think America is the place for me. So finally, it took me a while, though, because, you know, meanwhile I did my different experiences in Italy. Uh, I started my business. I was in the music business. I was a music manager. I was managing bands. Then I started a music magazine. I was a music magazine publisher, blah, blah, blah. And finally, at 27, I said, I had enough. And uh, I changed completely um, career. I became a Roman gladiator. I spent 15 months on the streets of Rome fighting with the, my stars for uh, reenactment shows, gladiator shows. And after 15 months, my English was almost decent. Yeah, huh? I'm just kidding, but, you know, compared to before, I thought I was, I was pretty hot. Imagine then. But somehow, I remember I had my little dictionary. It's almost decent. Almost decent. I had my almost. little... Almost. But, you know, I was learning from, my, um, from the tourists. You know, that's the way I learned English. Mm -hmm. On the streets of Rome, I was uh, 15 months uh, talking with my customers. So I had my little dictionary, and the more important, I had all the different CDs that I used to learn music when I was a, children, ch excuse me, a child. I used to le learn English from my so from the songs, you know, that's the way I learned mm -hmm. English. So anyway, I was made for loving you, baby, and uh, pretty much that's the story of my most line that I had when I was speaking English with a tourist. And anyway, after 15 months on the streets, finally I was able to say, I'm ready. I met uh, a German lady with an incredible love story. We went around the world for almost uh, three months. Then I decided we stop one time in Hawaii, in Los Angeles. I said, you know, I want to go back there. We need to go to America. She said, you're crazy. I don't go to America. Guess what? I will go back to America. So what happened? I went to the embassy, and I took my... Uh, I can't believe now, it. Which, okay, let me stop you right there. Which embassy did you go to? The, the United States Embassy? United States Embassy, exactly in Via where? Veneto, in Rome, Via Veneto. And, okay. uh, and that's the journey where my journey started. It, you know, there you go. There you have an interview. Mm -hmm. You show who you are. So tell me, tell me. Okay, so you went to the the embassy in in Rome, and yes. what did you do there? Tell me the little things you did. Well, like I pretty much begged. I said, I want to go to America. <laughs> 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 please. <laughs> please. And I was very lucky. There was incredible. Please, please. I, I need to get out of here. Okay, so you yeah. begged them. I begged them. And my, they said, my oh, my God. Okay, he's a pot, so the God. So she we're going to let him come. She was a very they nice lady. They let the gladiator in. Was a very, I didn't talk about the gladiator, but they saw all the business I did and all the different things I'd done. And, uh, you know, I was pretty much, you know, by the way, in Italy, I wasn't exactly like the immigrants that maybe left Italy a hundred years ago that they were living in very poor conditions. My family, you know, right. is pretty decent. And uh, I always had an opportunity if I wanted to make money, even in Italy, even it's difficult. But I wasn't exactly living under the bridges. I had a home and I had everything I wanted, okay? Right. Uh, but right. my point for me wasn't about money. It was about freedom. It was also about finding... So you, so 
so you go to the embassy. Tell me, did you have to fill out a form? Tell oh, me what you did. Because I'm trying to get to the point of questionnaire. I'm going somewhere. I'm going on a little show him, legal, show him that you legal can, show immigration him that, okay. journey here. First of all, show me that you have something you can do. And I show you my background, okay? I was in the time, I was a music publisher. I had a music magazine in the newsstands, 30,000 copies mm-hmm. every month. I published music books. I published uh, different things. I mean, I was, you know, I was an entrepreneur. That's what I did. I never really mm-hmm. worked for anybody in my life. Even when did I was. Did you have to pay a fee? When oh, you, yeah. Okay, oh, so yeah. when you went there, you had to bring yeah. your passport. Your passport. You, you, you play, fill an application. They do a background check. Then I had an interview. You do ba- applications. Did you pay any fees? Yes, yes. There are fees to pay. I don't so remember. what did you pay roughly back then? I, I don't remember right now, but there was some steps. So like 20 bucks? Oh, more than that. More than that. A little bit okay. more than that. Okay. So more than 100? Maybe less. But anyway, it was something. Maybe less. Okay, so about 80 between bucks, 50 I don't know. and $100. I don't know. It was something to pay. We had to pay. The point that you have most important was the interview with the consular, okay? Or at least the assistant. Okay, so now you have an interview, okay? Yeah, in English, believe it or not, okay? So mm-hmm. that's, at least, you know, my 15 months on the streets of Rome, you know, speaking English with, uh, with my uh, customers as a gladiator was working for something, was worth something. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I spoke with the... The American gladiator, the true story. Exactly. So anyway, <laughs> was, I, was, I had this nice interview with this uh, interesting lady, and uh, she was, of course, working for the, uh, like, assistant for the consular. The consul doesn't speak with everybody, but, you know, she, uh, different people. So I got my interview, and she said, come back in five days. So I came back in five days and said, oh, my God, oh, my God. And I was freaking out. Because there was a lady in front of me that she just was denied her visa. And uh, I knew this lady, by the way. She was also a friend of mine. And we found that by accident that day. Uh, she was a Roman lady. And uh, a lady, it was a young lady. I mean, she was my age. But my point was, she was crying. I said, why are you crying? Because they deny my visa. And I cannot even apply anymore for five years. I said, oh my God, this is like... Roulette, Russian so once roulette. you're denied, you can't go back for five years. Uh, technically, they told they you know wait for five years. Pretty harsh. Oh wow, they're, they're pretty strict rules. I mean, on the book. These wow, are, that is strict. Okay, so and the lady, by the way, I, for what I know, I mean, she, she's uh, come from a great family. She did, she wasn't even trying to go there to do anything like an illegal alien. I mean, they just threw their book at her. Okay, but regardless, mm-hmm. so I was kind of freaking out. So, oh my God, they only found out what I do here on the, on the streets of Rome, dressed half naked like a gladiator. They're going to probably kick me out so bad from the embassy. They don't want to talk to me anymore. <laughs> Especially the young lady that was talking to me. She thought I was crazy. Anyway, instead, I opened my little passport and I see 10 years visa. So I was almost, no, I was, I was screaming. I started screaming on the way out all the way to Via Veneto, where, to the subway. People thought I was crazy. My gosh, 57 minutes. We almost finished. I can't believe it. I even didn't see it. I need to let you go. One hour. We passed one hour. There no, we did not. 57 minutes, I, sh- I swear it. Chris, I had to let you go. Did we really? Yes, we are already out of the hour. Uh, let me, uh, you can need to come back. Oh, my one second, this is out. I cannot even play anything. I'll see you at the second hour. Don't go You're away. listening to Love, Guns, and Freedom with Lucas Zan. All United States, the FM, Network. Do you want social justice? Now I give you social justice. The Zana way. Don't trade on us. The Freedom Rifle by Zana. The most affordable military grade semi-automatic AR-15 rifle in M4 configuration. Chambered in 223 Wild. They can shoot both 556 NATO and 223 Remington. Four minutes of angle for just four hundred ninety nine dollars made in the usa get your freedom rifle now we need every law-abiding american armed with knowledge and at least one military rifle ready to defend good against evil with every don't trade on us rifle you will get free parchment replica of the united states constitution free digital cd don't trade on us free ebook how to become a rifleman free t-shirt Slaves are never armed. I am not a slave. Free 30 rounds magazine were allowed by the law. Free laser engraved ejection port. Don't trade on us. For just $499. Go to www.freedomrifle.com www.freedomrifle.com Get your freedom rifle now.
Here we go, guys and girls. You're listening to Love, Guns, and Freedom on K Talks 13:40 a.m. and on United States to the FM Network. Uh, this is the hour about guns. Uh, I tell you, it's really getting exciting because this is no more just a radio show, but also is an opportunity to meet you, interact with you, especially if you live here in Mojave County or in this area of Arizona and the tri-state area between Laughlin, Nevada, of course, and also Needles, California. You know. You're around here. And guess what? I'm trying to come towards you uh, so we can have a chance to meet each other. Hey, how? You know, I heard, I told you, last Sunday I had uh, an incredible uh, free gun safety class in exactly in Golden Valley here in Arizona uh, at the Mojave Sportsman Club. And it was a beautiful experience. It was an experiment I wanted to do, and I'm very excited. Now I'm going to do more. Uh, the idea was that uh, I want to share with people who are willing to learn uh, the very good foundation to handle, transport, and even shoot any type of firearm. This is, of course, it's, it's, it's a class that uh, is not about shooting, really, but it's about safety. That's the main keyword. And at the same time, you know, as I said, it's free. And when I say free, it means really free. It doesn't mean that, you know, uh, I'm going to ask you credit cards and then you got subscriptions and expiration. No, it's really free. I mean, I, don't, I, I want you there. My goal is to teach whatever I can teach you, whatever you can learn. And the idea why? Two reasons. First of all, I believe in every one of us as a little mission in life. Uh, I'm not saying that I'm a saint. I'm not saying that this is my mission completely. But I believe that, you know, I chose this path. I would like to try to share what I know with other law-abiding people who understand the opportunity and also the right of uh, being armed for self-defense and also the defense of freedom, of course. And uh, I really want to make this uh, an effort to say, if we have more law-abiding people in our communities with, with guns and knowledge, and of course all starts with safety, I really believe we can have a better country, a better city, better county, at the end, a better America. That's the idea. So I'm trying to do my little part there. Uh, second thing, you know, I also, I'm here, you know, I do different things and I can sponsor things. I like to sponsor things like in this case, one of my business, Zanna Enterprises LLC, that as a division we do uh, Zanna firearm trainings. I'd sponsor that. And that's beautiful. That's the idea of free market, you know. It is not like when you go to uh, get some tax dollar from somebody else and say it's free. No, this is really free. Anyway, let me shut up now. The idea why we are here, because I have a guest that has already been a guest of mine a few weeks ago, maybe a couple of months ago, about different topics. Something happened in Havasu. Today, I wanted to have him back because he also was, on my, uh, was in my class. And he came with his beautiful girlfriend, and I think it was beautiful because, you know, he, he was very interested, and he was very focused, and he wanted to know. And I, and I wanted to bring him on because I also know that he has some other questions, and these questions may be also helpful to the rest of you guys, you know. So we try to do this on the air so we can share with the rest of you. Now, uh, here we go. Let me bring him on. His name is Dennis. Dennis from Havas. Are you there? Yes. How are you, Dennis? Pretty good. How are you? Very good, man. It was finally nice meeting you in person, okay? Yes, uh, you too. Thank you very much. And thank you for saying all that. My girlfriend said thank you. Oh, she's listening. Oh, gosh. Now I'm going to get... Uh, <laughs> but it's true. She's a beautiful lady. And I'm not trying to be corny. And, uh, you know, you like a guy, okay? Are you um, yeah. Okay, good. Uh, did she punch you or something? I mean, because it's true. I mean, you like a guy. Of course, she's like a girl too. But the point is, I'm glad that you came, both of you. Because that's the spirit of doing things like this together. You know, it's like uh, you have a couple that you both can have a gun, or you want to carry a gun, or you already carry a gun. And in this way, you can start to learn together. It is also fun. First of all, did you like the class? Did you enjoy it? Oh, we both enjoyed it. We loved it. In fact, I've been carrying a gun on and off, as we discussed. And uh, she wants to, but she didn't feel comfortable until she... Uh, takes the CCW class, and this was actually, I think, I mean, this was a great class. I mean, especially for free, and it's all about safety. I mean, I would recommend you take this class um, as a precursor to the CCW class, you know. I mean, I would actually recommend, like, anybody do that. Um, we both learned a lot. That's good, and, and that was the idea, seriously, because at the end of the day, you know, I know that when I can share some information and at least uh, let you know things that you don't know, and then, of course, it's up to you to find, you know, 
to improve, to follow your path, you know, your journey. But at least you have a foundation, something to start. Now at least you know what you shouldn't do. And at that point, you know, we are going to become also a better society because I really believe, you know, for example, I told you during the class, there was a gentleman uh, in Kingman just a few months ago, last year, that uh, he went to the church, he was carrying a gun in his pocket, and bang, he, he shot himself in the butt, okay? I mean, how sad it is, not only stupid and irresponsible, but also sad because he could have probably hurt somebody else. He scared a lot of people. I mean, that was a bad day for everybody, you know, but could have been prevented it. So uh, that's the idea. So that's why I'm doing this. Now, I want just to remind, you know, because people say, you, I can't believe it. You, you're not doing free stuff like that. I mean, after all, how many hours did we spend together? About three and a half hours probably? Yeah, easily. In fact, yeah, we went over about an hour and a half, but it was well worth it. I yeah, mean, I, mean, it was, I mean, it was very informative. I mean, I said two hours class, we, I stay with you another one hour and a half, and I was having fun. I mean, for me, you know, like, oh, my God, I got to get out. It's I need to punch out, you know. This is, for me, something I enjoy doing it. So, now we're here. I want to ask you something about the class. Anything really that touched you, at least say, okay, that was really important. I'm glad that I heard that. Among the many things, that I think they're all important. But what was the most important thing you learned from the class, in your opinion? Uh, the most important thing I learned is uh, to check the condition of it. I mean, I don't want to sound, like, sound amateur, but I mean, well, I mean, I am. But I mean, that's the most important thing is, I mean, I was, uh, I, I actually wasn't doing it correctly. So, I mean, I would say that was the most important thing that I learned. Check the condition of, of any gun. So we start always from the chamber check, correct? Yes. Exactly. And this is true because normally I tell you, even in other type of curriculums, and, uh, you, know, you know, I'm an NRA instructor, okay, and uh, they have their curriculum. I got my curriculum. But when I teach these classes, I don't go through an NRA curriculum. I create my own curriculum. And I believe that starting from the chamber, it is very important because sometimes people say, okay, it's a step more. No, we do first with chamber check. Then at that point, we put a slide back in a battery, whatever it is. It's a rifle, a bolt action, doesn't matter. And then at that point, we remove the magazine. And at that point, we remove the round from the chamber. And at that point, we double-check the chamber and the magazine. It's an extra process, but guess what? When we want to really be sure that the gun is empty, that's the best way. Because many people, sometimes, they just remove the magazine and they forget the chamber. It's hot. And that's how people get killed or get injured. So... I think it's a good system. I like it. That's the way I learn it. That's the way I want to share it. Now, we were talking about so ammunition a little bit, even of course it wasn't the main topic. I know that you have a, a specific gun. Uh, can you tell us a little bit, what is the gun that you have right now? Well, I got the Walter uh, PPKS. It's an older one. It's a three eighty caliber. Okay. I mean, that one is... I'm not really an expert in Walter PPK, but if I understand, it's pretty much the James Bond gun. Am I right? Yes. I mean, it's kind of an interesting, cool little piece of gun. Uh, I'm not familiar with that, I must tell you. Normally, you know, I, I try to shoot as everything I can. That one, I miss it. But what did you learn about, uh, you know, about this gun that you want to change? Why you, Are you considering to change it for another gun, first of all? Yes. In fact, I, um, I plan on getting a new one. Actually, I want to get the 9mm just because the ammo is more accessible and cheaper. And even when I bought the Snapcat, or the snap caps that you recommended um, so that I could practice, those were even more expensive than the 380s, <laughs> and they were harder to find. Yeah. Um, so I want to go to that. I actually thought it was going to be a bigger gun when I went and looked at them. Um, if you look at the, the – like the one I'm thinking about getting is the Sig Sawyer. If you look at the 380 versus the 9 millimeter, I mean, we're, it's a minute difference in, like, how much bigger it is. It's really not that much bigger. So that's really not an issue. And uh, so uh, – I um, decided to go to the 9 millimeter. I will say, though, I am new to carrying. I used to conceal carry. Since the class, I feel more comfortable open carrying. You know, I mean, I just feel like, I don't know, I just feel more comfortable open carrying. So it does feel safer, and um, I have it in a, um, a safe holster. I just like, I, I, I don't carry it hot yet. I like the Walter PPKS because of the safety, and it's got, um, you click the safety and the hammer drops. So I could actually carry it hot and have the safety. But the Sig Sawyer has some of the same features. I was looking at that. And I will get to the point where I carry it hot. But even when I do, I just kind of – I know it takes a little bit longer to shoot it. But I just – especially after seeing that picture where you see the guy shot his butt, that you know. Yeah. I just um, – but I'm getting there. But, yeah, but, I mean, I just I, – I feel more comfortable 
without one in the chamber, without a hall, but with them in the clip, you know. And you let's know, let's look at like this one. Let's slide. let's talk one second about the round in the chamber, okay? Uh, it is good at least that hey, if you are, you say yourself, hey, I'm not comfortable, and that's great. At least you have uh, honesty to yourself, because many people trust me. They're scary. They they just ignore their ignorance, or at least things they don't know. They just try to do anyway. So that's scary. At least you say, I don't feel comfortable comfortable right now, and I want to wait. Uh, the point is, when you will start to get more, let's say, practical, and let's say more, uh, I don't want to use the word educated, but yeah, when you know a little more the things that what is going on, to have it around in the chamber, it is going to be just, uh, uh, let's say, the gun is going to be safe if you, first of all, comply with the safety rules, and more important, if you have the right holster, and of course, remember something, the gun is always going to be, uh, the muzzle of the gun always going to be pointing in a safe direction. So when you start to have a little bit more of that, at that point, you are the safety. Of course, when you have no round in the chamber, you know that even if you make a mistake, there's going to be a click rather than a bang. The problem is, though, and when we will do this CCW class, I'll show it to you, when you have uh, a split second to react... Uh, that extra split second to just round in the chamber as, as fast as you can be is going to be an extra second especially when you're under stress that could become a difference between life and death so at the beginning I say right now that's great at least you're carrying a gun better without rain in the chamber but at least you have a gun but as uh, we can train a little bit together as I can show you how to do it correctly you should be pretty soon be comfortable especially when you have the right gun, to completely have, in my opinion, that's the way I like to carry guns, with a round in the chamber. Because uh, it's going to take a lot of, uh, remember, you're under stress, you may freak out like everybody else. And uh, you, you may just go for the gun and, and squeeze the trigger and click. That's the point. So but anyway, but that's good. At well, least I'm glad you're, well, you're thinking that. Go ahead. Well, and that's kind of what I was anticipating is like after the CCW class and the one-on-one -on -one range training, you know, that I would actually, you know, that, that I would get more comfortable and probably start carrying it hot. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, um, I do, I have, uh, checked both my holsters, even, you know, the concealed carry one and the open carry one. And I checked them for the condition and how they fit the gun and they fit really good, especially after seeing that picture. So, um, and then, so for right now, I mean, and I actually got to the point where I'm actually even carrying it. You know, so that's a step forward, like, in the right direction as it is. And then, you know, like like you said, as I get the training and I feel more comfortable, I'll probably start carrying it hot. Yeah. Anyway, as I said, you know, there are different little things that really help to keep the gun safe. First of all, the gun itself, of course, most of the modern gun, guns, they have all safety mechanism. Even the Glock, the people say, oh, there are no external safety. At the end of the day, the gun is very safe. There are internal safety. So even if the gun falls, it's not going to shoot. Of course, there is no external safety, so you must be training uh, that uh, your finger is going to be always your final safety. That's for sure. Now, uh, benefit and don't. I mean, as I said, you can have an external safety, like, for example, the gun that you were talking about, the Sig Sauer P938. That is pretty much, you know, it's a very good gun. Don't get me wrong. They have a lot of good reviews, um, three inches barrel, nine millimeters, uh, it's like uh, almost like a 1911, you know, have a single action with a safety. My only point is, you know, you're going to train with a safety and you're going to stick with a safety. My humble opinion, I like guns that they are a little more, less, uh, let's say, I don't know, kind of compact, kind of little small. Uh, for some people, like, they need to really conceal a lot. That could be fine. I always say maybe you can get with something to, let's say, even even if you don't like Glocks or something the size of a Glock 19, okay, that uh, it is a little, let me see exactly, let me compare one second, because there is a lot of good stuff about, uh, for example, Glock 19 and Glock uh, that we were talking about, but 338. But regardless, whatever gun you have at the end of the day, it is going to be your training. It's going to be how much you practice, because you're going to become so familiar with the gun and that's really what makes the difference. Uh, did you already have a chance to at least handle at the gun shop the Glock, excuse me, the, the six hour P938 that you were talking? Uh, yes, and they had to use one. So um, we they were closed when we got there late. Last year, just went to buy the snap caps. 
um, and we were looking at them. But uh, both my girlfriend and I, when we go buy one, we're going to um, try it because they had one that was pre-owned, so we can actually try it. Okay. Well, my point is, can I ask you something? You don't have to answer, of course, uh, if it's personal. What type of gun does your girlfriend has? I'm just curious. Uh, I didn't have one yet. Okay. So uh, we're actually looking. So you, uh, we, she actually wanted the revolver, and we talked about it after the class, and uh, she's probably going to go yeah. to the semi-automatic. Tell him I'm going to really investigate when it comes to my gun. I'm going to make sure that... She wants to really look into it. Okay. I'm going to read about it, and now. I'm going to actually go to a place where they, um, I can test every gun before I purchase it. And she wants to test it before she purchases it. Great idea, by the way. That's a great idea. Can I give you my if personal... If it's not comfortable, it's not going to work. Exactly. Yeah. Now, how much is it charging you for that use uh, fix, a six-hour uh, that we were talking about? The P938. Uh, they were in the 700 all range, but we weren't really intending on buying the used ones. We were just going to shoot the used one. Okay. Now... You know, if you have an open mind, it means, of course, if you really like that Six Sour, that's great. Don't get me wrong. It's a great brand. It's a great gun. But, you know, let me put it in this way. I like, if I was you, if it was my girlfriend, what I would do. First of all, I like to standardize. You know, I like to have a gun that we can, you know, of course, we may have different hands. Maybe you need a bigger gun. Maybe she needs a smaller gun. Maybe not. But the point, I like to get a gun that we can have at least... Uh, we can learn together, and uh, you can also share holsters. You can share magazines. Uh, of course, we start with the caliber. You you got both gonna have nine millimeters. So, if let's say if you like the gun, that would be nice. There's something maybe she could get too. My problem with the gun, the nine thirty eight, is too small, and I tell you why. Um, you know, you have a gun that uh, if you want to train regularly. And you don't use like a backup. Use like your main gun. You want to be sure that first of all it fits completely in your in your palm, in your firing hand, and you can have enough room to completely, uh, let's say, control everything, starting from the slide and uh, the release button for the magazine. I mean, the point is, it's a very small little gun. It's a great for backup. By my opinion, like for example, you know, you have Glocks out there, okay? And there is the main Glock, normally the standard size in 9 millimeters is Glock uh, 17. Then you have a little a smaller size, it's called the Glock 19. That normally is a perfect gun for concealment, and so much they also now, but also it's a perfect gun for combat, so much that now the U.S. Marine Special part, the Special Division, they have a, a, a part with the Marine Corps, they use the gun, they chose the gun. So that's my point, you know, if you go too small, sometimes you're going to be limited as a just a backup gun. And when the gun is too small, uh, normally they're just really mostly for really close encounters. Let's say, you know, three, five, seven yards. But sometimes you may have need the extra accuracy that the longer barrel with a longer radius between the front and the rear sight may provide you. So I would say if I were you, and then I'll stop talking. Before you jump onto the gun, that you can buy for the price of one six hour, you could get two use Glock 19. And if you don't like the Glock, that's fine. There are also other t guns, like for example, you know, the Springfield Armory or the Smith & Wesson. Honestly, they have a great gun. They has... So the point is, just think a little bit about it, because I tell you what I don't like about the six hour. It's first of all, you have uh, pretty much like uh, the size is too small. And you have uh, this sort of, it's like, like, like a 1911. Don't get me wrong, it's a great gun. But you have this extra safety that can really complicate your life, in my opinion. I understand you say, I want the safety. That's fine. But once you train, your finger is going to be your safety. The position of your muzzle is going to be, uh, the, the direction of your muzzle is going to be your safety. So I don't know. And, uh, and then at that point, you know, let's say you get the same gun for you, your girlfriend. You can get spare parts. You can buy magazines together. You don't even have to stress. You go at the range, everybody got the same magazine. You go, you split magazines. You share magazines. So something to consider. That's what I was thinking about, you know. 
But uh, yeah, thank you. In fact, I'm I'm writing all this down. And actually, to be honest, I mean, we didn't. We walked the place we went to. I mean, I don't know if I'm supposed to say it on the radio, but they actually liked you. They had your hat, and they they knew where we had come from, and we so they were real nice. Just we were talking to them, and the gun was kind of flashy, and I liked it. So of course, I looked at it. And that's how I started on that. And then it had the extra safety, and then I kind of so I liked it for that. So we're not really sure about it. Like, of course. We're actually planning on finishing the classes, and she wants to do that before she gets hers. And, uh, yeah, that is really good. I mean, you know, I'm going to talk to her about that, and we probably will get the same one because that is good. I mean, bullets and – I mean, not bullets, but um, – Ammunition. Ammunition. Yeah. Cartridges and uh, – Question. Um, where did you and, go? Where did you go? We can say that. I mean, it's my show. You can say, where did you go? Which gun shop? Uh, it was Kingman's. What was the name of it? Um, Gina um, – oh, I forgot. It was in Kingman. Um, was a shots gun shop? Yeah, it's a gun shop. Shots. Place you can get a gun and you can actually shoot it on the premises. Yeah, they, we could actually shoot it there. I, I forget the name. It started with a D. Um, oh, Bank Street. Think, ba uh, Bank Street guns. Yes, yeah, Bank Street. Yeah, Bank Street guns. The guy had your joint trade on on uh, me hat. Okay. Okay. Yeah, he was really nice. All right, so good. Good. Okay, stuff, I, need, yeah. I need to go back there. Very good. Listen, as I said, you know. Uh, that's what you like. If it's your hand, you like it. Let's go for it. My only point, just before you buy, though, have a chance with your girlfriend to maybe try this. Uh, try that. You know, go to a gun shop and ask for a gun that could be, let's say, uh, as I said, I don't want to push the Glock as brand. You can go Glock or you can go, uh, let's say, Springfield Armory or Smith & West. So by the same type of striker system, um, Glock 19, that would be the perfect size for concealment the perfect site for uh, also combat, really, because it's a gun completely functional and also could fit uh, the average hand of a man and also the average hand of a woman. That, for me, would be a starting point that would be a great, great gun as a site to start for a compromise between concealment and functionality. I mean, something you can really work and use it. When you go too small, you start to go the subcompact, well, then for me it's become as a backup gun, as a second gun. But as I said, you know, as your girl was saying, go to the place, ask it to at least start to, you know, put it in your hand. And as we were talking during the class, every time they hand your gun, it's your, your responsibility to do a chamber check and always point the barrel in a safe direction. Now, maybe your girl, yeah. hey, what is the name of your girl? I for, I'm sorry, I forgot. Gina. Gina. Gina, if she wants to say something, she can jump on the air too. Gina, oh. something you want to ask me? Anything? Here, let me take you, because I have my headphones. You can hear her. Oh, can you hear me still? Yes, I'm here. I'm here. Hold on. Hold on one second. I'm sorry. Let me... No problem. Um, so, these phones. No problem. We're here on the air. You're listening to Love, Guns, and Freedom with Luca Zanna. And this is Dennis okay. from Mojave County. He was one of my uh, students at the free gun safety class I held uh, last sun Saturday. In Golden Valley, the Mavis Sportsman Club. He came with his girlfriend. And we're talking a little bit about here uh, what gun to buy for his uh, new, you know, improved version of uh, gun owner. You know, he say, hey, I want to get the right gun now. I know a little bit more. So we were talking about a little bit, maybe going from uh, um, guns like, uh, he liked the idea of a six hour P938. I would say, it looks good, maybe a little too small. Let's look at something that maybe you can have, uh, I don't know, maybe you can buy the same gun also for your girlfriend. And uh, the beautiful thing about Glocks, and I didn't think I want to tell you, Dennis, let's say, for example, you buy a Glock 17, like, okay? Like the one normally I like to carry. And your girlfriend likes to buy a Glock 19. Always 9 millimeters. Your Glock is little bigger size. Her Glock is little smaller size. You know that, first of all, most of the parts, they're still interchangeable. Uh, you learn in the same way, is the same type of concept. And also magazines, you can always give her one of your 17 rounds magazine that fits in her model 19. So that's not a beautiful oh. thing. That's not something, uh, the magazine, they're also pretty affordable. You can get a Glock brand magazine for 20 bucks. They're super resistant. And then you can get the aftermarket magazine perfect for training. They still work very well, in my opinion, uh, for about $10, $11. We can get cheaper than that. When you start to go in the six-hour world, I don't know exactly how much they charge you for a magazine, but uh, let's put it this way. You cannot find uh, aftermarket magazine that work for 10 bucks. okay? 
Yeah, thank you for that. And we're definitely going to wait until we take the classes and uh, and then so we can even talk about it more and try different guns and uh, that. You know what? I'm going to look into the Glock 19 and the Glock 17 because that does sound good. You know that we can do interchangeable and um uh, um and one thing is I do. I, I mean, we just we both uh, she needs to get hers and I need to upgrade to mine because I I like mine, but um, after taking your class and I like how you do the shoulder to shoulder and how you check your chamber and you pull the slide. Mine's just, it's just harder. It's just tighter. It's harder. And that's a safety issue. You know, I mean, I know how to do it. I practice with the snap cats. I've got uh, the snap caps. I've gotten real familiar with it, but I still, it'd just be nice if it was easier. Perfect. You know? At least that's um, good. I'm glad at least I could help there, at least to make you think, you know. As I said, it's a, there are beautiful guns. Every gun has a story, but we look for guns, my opinion, when we train for self defense, that they are practical, they are reliable, they are easy to use under stress. You know, I mean, seriously, when you and uh, you know, you know how to assemble, disassemble it without all, every time going crazy or needing tool. That's why I also like gun on the same style of the Glock because I can assemble, disassemble the gun, and even fix it if I have to, without really any tools most of the time. You know, and that's really something like, like that. Any other question you have, Dennis? Um, shoot, no. Uh, just uh, um. No, just, uh, you know what, um, that I, I'm definitely going to e email you in a couple of days, and we'll definitely be signing up for that uh, CCW class. Yeah, let me remind and, uh, uh, everybody when we have it, okay? It's going to be March the 25th, and I think it's a Saturday. Let me double-check one second, because right now I don't even remember. 25th is a Saturday, correct, at, tw at 10 o'clock uh, in Golden Valley at the Mojave Sportsman Club. And, of course, if you want to come, you need to reserve. We do just by reservation only. And I have a special. If you bring your lady or your boyfriend or whoever is your special person, I'm not going to ask you your sexual preferences. All I can that you are together. Okay? You got $20 each discount. Normally, the class is already a great deal. $85. You got five hours that you know normally what I do, uh, Dennis. Five, me always become six at least. If we have to, I don't care. Uh, full of information, one of the best curriculum. I've really been shopping around, looking around, the most complete curriculum in the industry. And then also we have free range time. That's the idea. So uh, that's pretty much the story. And uh, if you want to do it, simple. Go to azccw.us, azccw.us, send me an email so I can book you down because we have limited seats. So I'm looking forward to see you there, Dennis, okay? Yeah, definitely. And I'll send you an email in a couple of days. And, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, thank you for all you've done for us. And uh, that class is really helpful. And um, I look forward for you to see my uh, my firearm and see what you think of it. I mean, I'm probably not going to sell it. I'll keep it because it's old. You know, I mean, I'll put it in the safe when I get the new one. And um, thank you for all the advice. I'm going to look into it after um, we're done here. And, I mean, I'm going to look into all that. And i got a lot to consider now. Okay. And, uh, we'll, we'll definitely wait until we're done with the class, you know, and uh, – um, it'll give us some time to what look into the different ones. You know what I'll try to do that day? I will try to bring a Glock 19 with me. Okay? So, okay. Great. I always have my Glock 17s. I also will bring a Glock 19. So, at that point, maybe if your girlfriend wants to try it, or you want to try it, you're going to be able to try it, okay? Okay, great. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Just bring some 9 millimeters, okay? Bring a box of 9 no reloads, as I told you. We don't like reloads, especially with my gun. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, you know, and uh, so at least you can practice a little bit. I'll try. It will be in count, of course. And I'll try. Normally, I have extra Glock 19 around. If I, I'll try to bring one. So at least you're going to have a chance, okay? Okay, perfect. Yeah, we'll definitely get some um, good ammo. Some perfect. Good um and uh, since, since we're here, we're talking one second about the ammo. You know, as I said, during the uh, the... The class, I like to share this information. I hope uh, other listeners, you know, appreciate it, you know. One of the thing I, things I do on the air, I try to shop for you the best deals. And they're not even my sponsors. They're really what normally I buy. And I want to share it with you because I want you to have a chance to have all the things you need to become better gun owners. So I'm not going to wait that they become my sponsors or not. So let me tell you one place that normally I like to buy 9 millimeters rounds. They're really good deal. So far, you want the best. And it's called SSM GS Golf Ammo, A M M O dot com, S G M O dot com. I like especially for training the brown bear, the green box, 
they go around between eight and eight dollars and fifty four bucks. Uh, you can get probably a thousand rounds for about one th- for one hundred and sixty dollars. That's really good oh, price. Wow. And you do not pay a sale tax. Sorry, you know, City of King Madon doesn't deserve it, my opinion. And, uh, and the, or wherever you are, they always, always want more money, okay? Let them, let them starve a little bit, these bastards. Okay, so get you yeah. out of state. I love that. And I know some people say, oh, you're bad. Guess what? No, because they always want more money. No matter what, King Ma increase the sale tax. They're always hungry for more. So they need to understand the concept. They push it too much. We're going to buy somewhere else. But regardless, I don't want to digress, digress right now. But you can get very good quality ammo, steel case, but they work fine. And they're great for training, full metal jacket for a good price. That's why I like, you know, keep the same caliber around the house. And you can buy ammo together. That's the idea. Okay. Oh, really quick, just one more thing. That's another issue about my older gun, too, is uh, um, kind of why we want to get a newer one um, is... Uh, I can't shoot hollow points, and um, the uh, it, it has to be the round ammo. I'm limited to the ammunition that I can shoot because it just it gets stuck. It gets yeah. um, it gets uh, um, not the malfunction you called it, but it's uh, this is the stoppage. Yes, it, it always happens. You do that ammo, and it's just a bad stoppage, and it's an ammo jam, and it's just so it kind of limits you to the ammo, you know. So it's uh, that that was another issue that I forgot about this gun too. But oh, that's very well, important. Yeah, so, very important. Very important. Yeah, this is important, especially you know. It's also an older gun, you know. It may work, and uh, of course, remember 380 automatic, you know, ACP 380. If you have all the point, the good quality, you may have a decent uh, defensive round. For me, it's still underpowered, but still better than nothing. But when you have full metal jacket, you really, you know, I mean, it's sad, you know. You can get this much better results for the same recoil for half of the price. And of course, when you want defensive ammunition, most of the times you need hollow point. That's the idea. Otherwise, full metal jacket, they're going to just zip through, especially when the, the round is so small, it's not going to be powerful enough to stop a threat unless really you're shooting at the right spots, you know. So that's the point. But, yeah. you know, it works great in the movies with James Bond, <laughs> that type of gun, but in real life, a 380 full metal jacket, it is not really, as a, my opinion, as the first choice for self defense. All right, Lisa, say hi to Gene, okay? I appreciate you guys. Keep in touch, okay? Okay, great. We'll, e- we'll definitely email you in a couple of days. All right, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. That was, you know, I really excited. It was Dennis and Gina. I met them finally uh, at the class, and that's the idea. I really like to do these classes, you know. I mean, many people, you know, other people may go Saturday at the bar or stuff like that. I don't want to go to the bars. I don't like bars. Anyway, I like to meet people. I like to talk about things I like. And more important, the satisfaction that when I leave their room and people say, wow, I learned something new. And then at that point, they can share whatever they learned with somebody else. That, for me, priceless. All right? So anyway, if you want to do one of my free gun safety class, very simple. Go to freegunsafety.com. Freegunsafety.com. Send me an email, and I would love to book you up in my, one of my next classes, okay? Don't go away. You're listening to Love Guns and Freedom with Luca Zanna. And we continue. More about guns and training. It is time. Get your Arizona Concealed Carry Permit now. With Arizona Concealed Carry Permit by Zanna Enterprises, LLC. Become a more responsible and educated gun owner. Carry legally concealed in 35 states. Carry permitted in restaurants where alcohol is served. Learn where and how you can legally carry a firearm in Arizona. Learn where you can use deadly force. Where can you display your gun or not for self-defense? Learn how to deal with law enforcement while carrying a firearm. Learn how to be aware of your surroundings and how to avoid a confrontation. Buy your gun without waiting for a background check. Get your Arizona concealed carry permit now. Go to www.azccw.us. Go to www.azccw.us. Free for single mothers and people with disabilities. There we go. Back in the studio, you're listening to Love, Guns, and Freedom with Luca Zan. And guess what? Guess what? Right now, you're listening to the show, of course, it will be Sunday. But for me right now, when I'm recording, it's Saturday, Saturday night. Just back from a great CCW class in Lake Havasu. And I'm telling you, man, 
It's amazing. I really enjoy the experience and uh, the privilege to have to be with you and to share. You know, it's a great moment of trust. You know, you, you can choose a lot of instructors out there. And the fact you choose me, I really appreciate you. And I tell you, I'm not trying to brag, but I have, I'm having great, great uh, feedbacks. There was today was a gentleman uh, from Awasu. He told me that he did already three different CCW classes from different uh, states. And this was the best for him. So, I, I don't know, I'm humble and I'm thankful. Now, you know, why this is important? I really believe this is like almost for me, it's like a mission. You know, like people like to go to the hospitals, help. Uh, or people like to go to help the poor, so try to help in churches. I do this. I really believe that to have law-abiding citizens armed with knowledge, first of all, and of course with the right attitude as a good people, as a law-abiding gun owners, and with guns armed, it's an asset to society. That's a fact. I mean, seriously. I mean, think about it. It's, it's, it's just logic. When you have law-abiding people with arms, with weapons and guns, and they know how to use them, crime is going to be low. And more important, evil is going to be under check. That's the point. So it's an opportunity. And uh, by the way, just because I want to remind you, next Saturday, you know, I will be in Phoenix, Phoenix, Arizona. Wow, it's an amazing trip for me. Normally, I, I hate Phoenix, you know that. I already went there a few times for the gun shows. And I said, I'm never going to go back there anymore. And guess what? Then when I have opportunities like that, I say, okay, I will really push myself. Because I tell you, it is something great. I'm going to be teaching CCW class for a church. I think that's beautiful. You know, people at church, they want to carry guns. It's their right. It's also their duty to protect themselves and their church. But they want to know how to do it legally, how to do it lawfully, how to know the laws, I mean, and everything else. And I'll try to do my best to give them the best class. And by the way, you know, my average class, just to let you know, it's about five hours. Uh, and I don't stop. I don't even take breaks. And normally, I really like to go. And more and more I can. Because I'm going to give you probably... Five times more what the average requirement from the DPS, from the state of Arizona, they ask you. Because my idea is when you get a class, you don't have the false sense of security that you know it all. No, you know what you do not know at that point. At least I'm trying to let you know what you do not know, and you need to find further training. That's the idea. So, it's amazing. A little tiring. I must tell you, my voice is a little tired and, uh, you know, a little driving. But well, guess what? It's an, an amazing opportunity. So, I want to thank you. Uh, seriously, to 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 be with me, to to to, have to cho choose me for that, it's a great opportunity. Now, Saturday, as I said, I'll be in Phoenix. If you want to join at me, if you want to join also the other students, you can still. I mean, if you're in Phoenix, I like to I would like to meet you. You know, uh, so you go, you can go to my website uh, azccw.us, and uh, also you can shoot me an email from there, and let me know, and I can give you details. The location of the class, of course, is private. But if you email me, I can let you know exactly where I am. And if you want, you can also come and join me in the class, okay? So that would be a great opportunity. So that's pretty much, you know, regarding the CCW class. Now, I also would like to remind you that the 25th, believe it or not, I'm already looking at the 25th. Oh, excuse me, the 18th of, uh, the, oh, excuse me, the 19th. I'm, so, I'm sorry, this is completely, my brain is fuming. The 11th, this is crazy. The 11th, I'll be in Phoenix. The 12th. I will be in Havasu again at the Havasu Guns for a free gun safety class. Free gun safety class, okay? So it's completely free. Just let me know. Call Havasu Guns for their class if you want to come, okay? Wow, my brain must be really fusy. I'm sorry, guys, okay? So anyway, it's going to be fun. That's all I can say. And more important, educational. Now, this is the hour about guns. There are so many things I would like to talk, of course. But maybe I would like to talk a little bit more about the opportunity, what you can learn when you do an Arizona CCW class, or what you should learn. Uh, let me talk a little bit about, for example, let's say, uh, what type of guns, you know, uh, and caliber specifically. As I said, any gun will do it if you are trained, if you have the right attitude, if you have the combat mindset. So the point is, of course, there are guns that are better than other guns. I said always stay away from, uh, let's say, complicated guns. Stay away from historical reproduction guns. Single action, they have no place in a self-defense situation, unless that's all you have. 
So you can choose between, you know, I don't care if you go for double action revolver or if you go semi-automatic, but whatever gun you have, the bottom line is train with that. And you train and you carry the same gun. Do not train with one gun and then carry another one. And don't start to start to, you know, get too creative that you're going to, you know, train every day with a different gun. And then every day you carry a different gun because you're going to go crazy. And under stress, you don't know what you're doing at that point. So my point is keep it simple. There was also this expression from, um, uh, excuse me, it's an expression, I don't know from whom, but it says, be careful of the man who wants only one gun. Why? Because he may know how to use it. Okay, so that's the bottom line. Uh, that's pretty much the story. Anyway, what can I say? All I want to say is that uh, you, can, you want to keep it simple. Now, regarding the ammunition, uh, ammunition and calibers. There are so many calibers out there, you know. It's, after all, we are pretty much in a situation that uh, you can buy almost every ammunition you want. Some are easier to find, some are not. What is the best caliber for self-defense? Well, let's put it in this way. Any caliber that allows you to deliver at least a control pair in the thoracic area of your opponent as fast as you can, and you can guarantee the hits. Simple as that. Well, that's the story. Uh, you can go between, uh, you know, people say, oh, the 22 long rifle. Of course, it's not the first choice. It's not the first choice. But that's all you can shoot. Well, you should probably shoot that because maybe that's all you can handle as a recoil. Then, of course, the real self-defense, my opinion, would start with the 9 millimeters. People, they also like the 380 ACP. Guess what? 380, uh, you know what? It's not a bad caliber. Honestly, I wouldn't be my first choice. It's like a 9 millimeter underpower. Okay? So think about that. Uh, you want to have the same type of recoil and you have an underpower round. And also you're going to pay probably double the money what you pay for a 9 millimeter. Why? Why doing that? Just some ideas. Also, another thing I like to tell you, you know, people say I like the 40, I like the 45. Listen, it doesn't matter. Whatever is the caliber you choose, you will train. My opinion now, there is a big comeback to the 9 millimeters. Not just my opinion. Let's look also, for example, what, uh, let's say, uh, the FBI did just recently. They went back to the 9 millimeters. Why? Because the 9 millimeters, all a point, the new generation, they can achieve enough speed that they can have completely a great ballistic results, they can have this hydrostatic force to expand and really create the trauma that you need to stop a threat. There are several videos, for example, on, on, um, on YouTube. You can watch, for example, shooting hollow point 45 through a watermelon, and all it does, it just generates, it creates a hole. Believe it or not, just a little hole, 45 hollow point. Then you have a 9 millimeter hollow point to the same watermelon. The watermelon will explode. Why? Because the speed of the 9 millimeters is much more than 850 feet per second of the average 45. That's very important. Something you need to consider. Of course, there are also the 40 calibers, great cartridge. Don't get me wrong, great round. But my opinion is, you know, you can pretty much now, my opinion, have less stress, less recoil, and still the same performance as with a 9. So much as I said, the FBI chose the 9. Everybody can shoot a 9. 9 are cheaper also. But this is just my opinion. Don't start to have a debate. You know, you can do whatever you want. I don't care. All I care that when you do, you buy an ammunition, you be sure that it performs, penetrate, and you have also a good price that you can train with, and you have availability. So my more important is performance. Okay? Now, very important, for self-defense situation where you conceal carry, you do not want to... Um, Start to carry anything that is homebrewed. Let's say reloads. Stay away from reloads. Why? For many reasons. First of all, I'll tell you. I think I trust more a company like Winchester or anybody out there that they have multi-million dollars industry and you know liability. And more important, they I tell you, it's, I never had a problem with any uh, brand ammo. Okay. I know that I saw problems with reloads. That's the point. So stick with that and also for liability. So think about that too, okay? Well, what can I say? About 38 Special, 357 Magnum. Big controversy. You know, people say, oh, 357 Magnum is a great round. It is if you are in a bear country, or maybe if you are in a car, and somebody's trying to carjack you. Yes, you can stop probably a car. But 
for two legs predators, uh, a 357 Magnum, even just the average lot, can be way too much over penetrating, in my opinion. And the recoil, you're going to have a little bit of a problem also for the, let's say, when you start to have, you know, lots like that with big recoil, it's going to take more time for the second and third shot because the recoil is going to mess up your side alignment. So think about that too, okay? So a compromise between speed, recoil, and, of course, penetration. You don't want to over-penetrate, and that's very important to consider. So in my opinion, in cities, towns, things like that, uh, 357 Magnum, I wouldn't consider it. 38 Special probably is better. All the point, if you can get good ammo that can expand, the problem is that normally most of these uh, short barrels, uh, let's say revolvers, well, they need a little longer revolver barrel, excuse me, to, to have that type of speed that allows that bullet to expand. That's the problem. And to end, you know, people say, oh, the 44 Magnum. Yeah, it's great if you, you know, if you're in the movie, like, you know, Clint Eastwood, that was a beautiful movie. I like this movie. But in real life, you know, it is not anything close you should use to a real life situation unless you are in bear country. If you're in the bear country, you have bears to face, great gun, but not for human beings. Too much recoil, too much power, too much over penetration, too much everything. Seriously. It's not even fun to shoot after a while. That's pretty much the story. Um, so remember, you want to be sure that whatever ammunition you, you buy and you carry, you stick with that, and you want to be sure that, uh, you know, you at least deliver a control pair, and whatever type of speed you have, I don't care how fast you are, you must not miss the target. That's the most important thing. So whatever allows you to deliver at least a control pair in the thoracic area of your opponent as fast as you can guarantee the hits. That's the ammunition you need, okay? That's the bottom line. Now, important, how many ammunition you carry on you? Well, if you carry a gun, always have at least a spare magazine. That's the bottom line. You really need to think about that. Do not have a gun without an extra magazine, at least. So what can I say? Um, something to consider that. Now, I want to take a little break, and then we come back, and we will continue this conversation about ammunition and, of course, self-defense. You're listening to Love, Guns, and Freedom with Luca Zan. Do not go away. In this world where everything seems to be going sideways, when you need things set straight, Zanna Coffee Straight Shot Espresso. Start your day with a bang. The best organic and GMO free coffee beans from around the world to amplify your senses and enhance love for life, liberty and the pursuit of happiness. Zanna Coffee brings you happiness in every cup. Fair trade, certified, sustainable, organic coffee. That means we do not use slaves. Free Zanna songs with every coffee bag. Find Zanna Coffee at www.zannacoffee.com www.zannacoffee.com Don't be cheap. You deserve the best. Get Zanna Coffee at www.zannacoffee.com ZannaCoffee.com There we go, we are back, we are almost at the end. Pretty much what I wanted to say, you know, this is regarding the opportunity to understand that ammunition in a self-defense situation, they are vital. That's why you always want to rely to brand ammunition. I don't care which brand, seriously. But stay away from reloads for many reasons, especially also for, let's say, the liability aspect, as I said before. And also, last thing you want to do in case you have to use your gun for self-defense, and at that point you had, let's say, a, a reloads, that could be also used in court against you. Because after all, what you want to do, you want to use the same ammunition that law enforcement, our law enforcement officers use. You don't want to look like somebody who's somehow homebrewing some cyanide, explosive, you know, lethal ammunition, because that's the way the prosecutor, prosecutor may try to paint you. So use just what our law enforcement uses. Okay? If it's good for them, it can be good for you. Simple as that. So that's pretty much the story. Another thing about ammunition, um, as a safety concern, be sure always, believe it or not, many people, especially the new gun owners, whenever they buy the, the gun, they buy the first box of ammo, and sometimes they don't even know what ammo they're buying. 
There's some ammo that may fit in your gun, but it's not made for the gun. For example, the 380 ACP. I mean, watch it with the 9 millimeters. You know, if you have a Glock 9 millimeters, if you have a Glock 40 caliber, well, watch there too. So always check the box, always check the, the gun, the barrel. Normally it's on the barrel, on the slide also. So that's very, very important. So the last thing about the ammo. When you clean your gun, it may well be possible that probably you um, use some product, like normally, you know, you have this sort of uh, lubrificants. Be sure that you do not leave residual that it may go inside your ammunition. That's very important. Because that would be something very catastrophic situation. If you, you have to, uh, if you have to use that round and the round does not work because somehow it's contaminated with the lubrificant or with the oils, that's a disaster. So be sure. Also, another important thing, how many ammunition we were talking, you know, uh, listen, uh, normally the FBI statistics says that the regular, the average, let's say, uh, encounter of a violent encounter between a law-abiding person and a criminal. It is about three seconds and three yards and three rounds. Three rounds, so they say. And probably 99% of the cases may be that. But the problem is that you don't know the money that you leave the house, really how many scumbags you may face. You don't know if you're going to be in a situation that maybe you need more than three rounds. Maybe three misses the first time you shoot a gun. Or you only go knows. Maybe that three rounds, they're not going to be enough. So the point is, if you carry a gun, in my opinion, you should always have, as I said, spare ammunition. Now, with revolvers, of course, even worse. You need to really more, even be more careful. That's the reality. Because normally the average revolver, you have about five rounds. Maybe six. So really, right there, you can imagine... Between that, maybe in a semi-automatic, like a double stack magazine, like a Glock, you have there already 15 or 17 rounds with the average Glock. So that's the point. So please, just uh, just think about that, okay? I always say bring at least an extra magazine or at least a couple regular little clips for, uh, you know, the revolver. That's the bottom line. Uh, I like to carry pretty much like, uh, let's say, at least two extra magazines on me plus the one in the gun. And people say, oh my gosh, where are you going to war? No, it's just called being prepared. I mean, law enforcement, normally that's what they carry at least. And I tell you, especially if you live in a rural area, then maybe, uh, you know, if you ask for help, it may take time. You know, it may take time. You know, the sheriff in some areas where I live in Moave County, it may take 20 minutes. Okay. In some other part of the county, it may take an hour. So what? You're going to stay there with five rounds? So seriously, something to consider. Now, very important. I want to remind you that we have the new uppers for the Don't Tread on Us rifle. Okay? The rifles are available at Havasu Guns, just to let you know, in Havasu. But if you want just the upper, okay, we have it for a super special. Seriously, uh, this is a celebration special for the uh, U.S. trademark uh, office that they allowed me to have my trademark. Don't Tread on Us, the Freedom Rifle. So we have the new uppers with the new logo, with the trademark. It's beautiful. I really like it a lot. With the change of design, we made it even better. And uh, please, just send me an email. I will send you this offer just for the upper. Free shipping. $349. You got the all upper complete. This is just for limited. This is for the on the air only. And you have also a lot of beautiful free bonuses with the upper. It doesn't come just with a complete upper with bolt. You also have a rear sight. You have also a free magazine where allowed by the law. You have a free T-shirt. You have, of course, access to the e-book, How to Become a Rifleman. You have the downloadable CD, Don't Trade on Us. And uh, what else? I mean, oh, don't forget, if you live in Moabie County, I also want to shoot with the rapper with you, and we can test it together. And we have lifetime warranty on the upper, of course, without the bolt. The bolt, of course, is something that eventually you have to change it, okay? So anyway, something just to share with you, because that's the spirit of the show. We always try to share um, good things, or this information of their products, things that hopefully you can use, they can improve our life, your life. That's the bottom line. Okay, very good. At this point, we're ready for our number three. And I still want to remind you one more time, next Sunday, I will be in Phoenix. So if you listen to the show, if you're in Phoenix, excuse me, next Saturday, my gosh, today, I will be in Phoenix. So 
Uh, it's going to be exactly the 11th. Okay? Uh, if you want to come to the Arizona Concealed Carry, per, carry Permit uh, class, uh, please email me, zanna at zanna.us, or just go to cc, excuse me, azccw.us. Okay? And uh, you can email me there. And at that point, you can able to maybe, hopefully we have enough sp seats uh, left, you can join me for the, free, the Phoenix class. Okay? Now, at that point, we go for our number three. We're going to have an interesting story. Unfortunately, it's the sad story. I talked to you about Dev Ace, the former owner of the station, uh, last week. And now, this hour, next hour, I will have the hour about love, another friend, a very close friend to Dev Ace, Frank Costigan. Do not go away, please. You're listening to Love, Guns, and Freedom with Luca Zan. It is time. Get your Arizona Concealed Carry Permit now. With Arizona Concealed Carry Permit by Zanna Enterprises, LLC. Become a more responsible and educated gun owner. Carry legally concealed in 35 states. Carry permitted in restaurants where alcohol is served. Learn where and how you can legally carry a firearm in Arizona. Learn where you can use deadly force. Where can you display your gun or not for self-defense? Learn how to deal with law enforcement while carrying a firearm. Learn how to be aware of your surroundings and how to avoid a confrontation. Buy your gun without waiting for a background check. Get your Arizona concealed carry permit now. Go to www.azccw.us. Go to www.azccw.us. Free for single mothers and people with disabilities. You're listening to Love, Guns and Freedom with Lucas Zanna on United States FM Network. He's a songwriter, a poet, a rifleman, I'm not afraid. and a constitutional activist, I'm not afraid. Italian by birth, I'm not afraid. American by choice, Jean-Luc Gazzana, I'm not afraid. and his new CD, Love, Guns, and Fear, 16 powerful songs on one CD from the heart of a patriot. For download or to order the CD, go to www.lovegunsfreedom.com. That's www.lovegunsfreedom.com. Lyrics for your mind, music for your heart. John Lucasana's new CD, Love, Guns, and Freedom. Here we go, guys and girls. You're listening to Love, Guns, and Freedom with Luca Zanna on K-Talks 1340 AM and on United States to the FM Network. Final hour, the hour about love. I must tell you, more I grow up, more I get a little older, and that's normal. We all get older, you know. More I start thinking. i always been a guy that always was thinking. When I was a kid... You know, when I, I think when I was two, I was thinking so much that my head is so big. I saw sometimes my photos, it's huge. And I'm not kidding. I think I was a little more mature than my age. But for sure, the last few years, you know, when you start to get close to different type of age type, you know, I'm 48, I'm getting 49 in the next uh, few months. Even though, of course, I feel great. But, you know, realize that we are here for a limited time on this planet. And that's almost beautiful. I tell you why. You think if you were here forever, for eternity, you get bored, first of all. Don't even get me going then pay, paying taxes and government harassment forever. It's like hell, I would call it. But beside that, seriously, it is an opportunity that we, we have. We don't know when time comes and when time goes. It's not up to us to decide. Regardless, you know, whatever, whatever belief you have, I don't care. But, you know, that's the truth. We're here and we don't know when our time is going to come. So... If you think about that, and you use it in a positive way, you enjoy, you appreciate, and you try to live the best way you can, even probably, I say, to be the best person you can to you and to your next door or next person to you, because you know that 
after all, we are all here for a limited time. And that's what I like of our mortality. And also as a reminder that, uh, you know, don't be a jerk. Uh, don't have regrets. But at the same time, do not be a pain in the ass for the next person close to you. Because it doesn't mean that you're allowed to do anything you want just because you're going one day. So live to your full or to the fullest. But at the same time, be respectful and nice to each other. And don't ever underestimate. Don't ever take for granted that tomorrow you're going to be here. And maybe you could say, they think that you had not a chance to say it yesterday or even just this morning before your mom left or you left to work or, or maybe you got mad at your brother or your sister or your friend. There is no reason. Seriously, not is so at the end. Everything is important, but not is so serious. Everything is relative. Now, where am I going? This, so, Luca, can you shut up? Can you just go to the point? Yes, I will go to the point. Uh, just last week, one person that I, it really became very important in my life. Even I never spent much time with him. But the fact that today I already told you briefly, we were talking briefly about this, that I'm on the air, and I've been on the air the last three years. It didn't happen by accident. I believe there are no accidents in life. There are, let's say, circumstances. There are also, of course, a part, you want to call it destiny. Then if you want to believe in God, also part of God's plan. But also there are different people at different elements that place in your life and that these elements somehow can make, can make a difference. So the point is, I never wanted to be on the air. I never really had, even thought I had a chance to be on the air or the skills to be on the air. I never done this. But there was this man that somehow, even most of the time we used to look at each other and politically different. We are from different spectrum, but not necessarily. Some other issue we, we agree a lot. Anyway, he gave me this opportunity. His name was, and I say sadness, with sadness, was Dave Hayes. And uh, with Dave was also another guy that is not a guy. He's still here, thank God. But uh, also became a more and more, you know, I don't know. I never even if I don't spend much time with him. I like him even more because I realize, you know, I tell let me just shut up. Let me just bring him on. It, it, it is something I almost getting emotional here. Frank Costigan, are you here? Yes, I am, Luca. Hey, man. First of all, I wanted to say hi. And uh, even I know we don't spend much time together. And uh, But every time I see you, I consider you a friend, a brother, and a father. I wanted to let you know that. Well, that's good. I, I look at you as a brother, my friend. You know. And I was talking about Dave. Because uh, you, I know last week, uh, almost, you know, on K Talks, many of you guys, you spent a few hours on the show with Robert. And, I mean, there's been a lot of talking. And... That's great, but I wanted to wait a week because now that somehow I don't want to say everything settled because nothing really settles. You know, we're still thinking about Dave, but I think maybe we can have a chance to talk a little bit more, not just about Dave, but about probably what I was trying to bring at the beginning of the show uh, at this hour, you know, our mortality and how everything is so important. By the end, everything is so relative. And maybe we should learn as a reminder that we almost, you know, sometimes we forget that we're here for a, for a limited time. And we become arrogant, and we become sometimes a little, you know, cocky, or maybe we just become jerks, okay? And we could be better people, I think, if we just remind that, hey, maybe tomorrow is your day, maybe today is your day, be nicer, you know? Uh, that's what I pretty much I was trying to bring. And also, I would like to talk about Dave, of course, and also you, and whatever we want. So first of all, I'll give you the floor. You start. I would like to say, um, first of all, if you can give me more details about... Uh, because I didn't talk much about the details, how Dave Hayes left this planet. Um, how did it happen? Well, Dave, a week ago Saturday, went for a triple bypass heart surgery. Yes. And it, it came totally out of the blue. He thought he was having symptoms of uh, diabetes because he'd never had a heart problem. Yeah. And then uh, he started getting some... Uh, reactions so he went to the hospital thinking he was having a stroke well the mri showed that he had three uh of the arteries that feed his heart wow were clogged were clogged wow so on monday they did a no on saturday they did the bypass surgery this is at loma linda university medical center in california yeah and he was in the heart trauma unit one of the best in the country 
So on Tuesday, I had to go to the VA, which is right down the street in yeah. Loma Linda. So I stopped by to visit Dave on Tuesday, and he was in the hospital. So I went up there, and uh, he was in good spirit. Uh, he looked at me and he says, I'm alive. Wow. Wow. And, uh, but he, but, uh, you know, talking to him, I could tell he was at, at full peace with his beliefs. Yeah. And, uh, he was looking forward, he said, to the next dimension. I understand. And those that know Dave know that he always said he was from the future. Well, I tell you, it's true. He always told me that too. I remember when I used to do the first year, at least the first six months, I used to go down, come down to the station. And uh, after the show, we used to talk, uh, and, uh, you know, we spent at least normally 30, 40 minutes. And, you know, we, and Dave talks about many things, but it's true. One of the things he was talking about, about his spirituality, about also what he believes, and he never was, uh, for a moment, afraid to leave this dimension, as he says, or as he said. And uh, never the word, uh, you know, death, it was never like a, a fear. Like I understand many of us... I'm not talking for myself because I don't want to, but in general, humanity, they always think death, oh my God, you know, but I think that is bad for who remains here because most I think is a selfish way because we miss that person. But at the end, if you believe that there is another dimension, regardless of your belief, whatever you are, if you're a Christian or whatever you are, if you are a pagan, you may be here in Valhalla or if you are Jesus Christ, you believe in heaven. You know that there's another place, it's a better place, but for them was the future. I remember that. It was kind of always intrigued me a little bit. But uh, so he was pretty at peace, and I'm sure about that because he was always talking about me like that. You know, he never felt a moment that he was fearing death. Well, how did he feel like uh, physically? Was he because I didn't see him probably in a couple of years since he saw the station? Was this okay? He lost weight? He gained weight? I'm just curious. Actually, he was looking better than he had when he was at the station. Wow, I'm sure that's stress. because he was doing what he loved. He was out writing music. Yeah, he even wrote he even wrote some music that was used in the. Uh, Super Bowl and some wow. of the advertisements and the background music. That's great, money too. That's great. That, that was Dave Hayes doing that. Wow, that's really good. I'm, I'm glad. You know, at least so he... so he he was enjoying what he was doing. Yeah. And uh, you know, he said he missed the radio, but he never want to go back. Oh yes. To an AM or FM station. Yeah. He wanted what he was doing was developing something for the internet. Mm -hmm. So that he and I could have an internet radio show yeah no, I mean, and uh, that's what he was working on before he had this uh, heart problem yeah you know and i remember we used to talk about the internet too before he left you know i mean before he saw the station i believe he's right you know internet is already the future uh and uh, you can reach now the world i mean seriously not just limited to your area and, of course, there is more freedom, and uh, you don't need to worry about FCC. And also, as important, you don't need to stress out every month with bills. You know, I remember he was always so worried. I mean, he, he put his heart into the station, and at the same time, he was trying to keep the format very honorable, you know, away from corporate uh, control. Because, you know, when you start to bend over to all the sponsors, and the sponsor, they can tell you, dictate you what you have to say or can say, there you lose your freedom of speech. So David was counting mostly on the support of the listeners. So that was something I tell you that at the end, as much uh, people should have appreciated, but unfortunately, it's tough. You know, it's tough to put the money together at the end of the month. But he was always trying hard. I remember that. So listen, and uh, what happened? So he, he left the hospital. He had this bypass. And uh, where we go from there? What happened then, Frank? Okay, he, he was due to check out on Thursday morning. But he checked himself out on Wednesday afternoon. Okay. And he was going to go to his mother's in Rancho Cucamonga for a month of rehabilitation. Okay. That's nice. He has a month. So still. he went to his mother's. Yeah. Spent the night, woke up, and he had breakfast with his mother and father. Wow. And, you know, and they're not together anymore. But yeah. he had told me at the hospital that one of the good side effects of all this. Yeah. Because he got to big bread with his mom and dad together. Oh, that's nice. That's really nice. And he said he hadn't been able to do that for 25 years. Wow. wow. So he had breakfast in the morning with his parents, and then he said, I'm going to go out and take a shower and then take a nap. Yeah. So he took the shower, got in bed, and took a nap. Well, several hours went by, and his dad went up to see if he wanted something to eat for lunch or dinner. Yeah. 
and found that he was unresponsive. Wow. But he said the bed was smooth. There was no, it looked like he just no fell asleep and died. Yeah, no, no pain. No, that's, that's amazing. I tell you, you know, as much as people can say, oh, my God, you know what? That's If I had to say, God, give me a chance to find and decide how I die, that's the, probably the most uh, peaceful way you can leave this body. I mean, with your family, uh, in your home, not in the middle of a street or with, you know, by yourself. And, uh, of course, without violence, without pain, I mean, that's just, I'm, I'm glad, at least that part, I'm very glad for him. But he was young. I mean, how old he was, if you can tell me. I never 56. Really... 56? Oh my 56. God. Oh, my gosh. With five, right? Five, six. Am I right? Five, six, wow. yeah. It 20 was... years younger than I am. My gosh, he's very young. I mean, uh, wow, 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 wow. I, I know that... But you know that he always ended the, st the show every day? We've go out and make the world a better place. Yes, I remember that. And that's exactly what he tried to do. Yeah, I believe he was generally there. With his heart, he was completely there. He was never faking it. Even sometimes maybe it could have sounded utopistic or maybe we may disagree on the way you wanted to do it. But in his heart, I know that he meant everything he said in that way. And I tell you, you know, for me as a human being, as much even uh, lately, you know, sometimes I tell you, and I'm honest, you know, I, I'm always honest. Uh, Dave, I love him as a human being. Uh, sometimes politically, it bugs the hell out of me. But that's okay. That's okay. The only thing, he had a little problem with me. He loved to almost, uh, I don't know, at the beginning he used to tell me almost, you know, look, I'm trying to chew your head a little bit so at least I can train you when you go on the radio and you can debate people. Or somehow, you know, I keep you, I keep you uh, sharp. And I said, that's great, Dave. After a while, it becomes kind of tiring because every time I post something on Facebook, I mean, on my own page, Oh my gosh, he always had to go after me, like, you know, because of course we disagree on many <laughs> social economics, but you know, I'm not mad, you know, I just, you know, like when I came to the station down, you remember, uh, I think it was uh, the first time exactly three years ago, uh, and I, I put out that uh, little web page about religion of freedom, and Dave, of course, has, has to find something that was somehow, I don't know, almost I was full of BS, okay, and that's great, I said, come on, Dave, I'll be happy to come to your show and and I'll explain to you this religion of freedom. I think it was beautiful, and that probably was meant to be, you know, from some stupid idea that I had, or at least some sort of a provocative idea I was messing around. I had a chance to meet you guys, and I brought bread that day, I remember. I think I also brought some wine, and um, and I was able, you know, just to speak with you, and by accident, even I don't believe in accidents, you and Dave, correct me if I'm wrong, somehow I say, you know what, that's crazy Luca with the accent, Maybe we should give him a chance to have his own little radio show. And guess what you created? A monster here. Can you believe that? Yeah, we did. And I'm very <laughs> proud of that. <laughs> but, you know, and that's exactly for me how Dave Ace always lives, you know. He lives in, uh, like, uh, you know, when you are a farmer, you know. You go on the field and you spread seeds. And you don't know that little seed what's going to happen. It may become a tree or may become nothing. But the point, when you start to spread a lot of seeds out there, well... One day you may start to look back, a lot of things may happen. I'm not saying that I'm a tree or I'm a big seed, but in my own little way, I really felt that, uh, you know, as much as sometimes we disagree with Dave, one thing I always like about him, and I respected it, I respected him for that. When he was in charge of the station, when he was the owner of the station, he never uh, came to me and said, look, as much as I disagree with you, even when I went the craziest thing down on the air, you know, you know the stuff I say normally and, you know, everything I could irritate, all the Obamanoids and all this stuff, well, he never told me what to say. Never. He gave me always complete freedom of speech. Of course, always with the respect of uh, FCC rules, and I never really was, uh, uh, you know, lying about anybody. I was just talking politically things that could be fine, you know, maybe offensive or whatever, but they were still in my right to say that. He never told me what to say. And more important... He, he always, you know, I like the way K talks uh, has been, especially when he started with him, because it was always the place that there were no type of filters. You can call in, you know, and uh, whatever you have to say, you have a voice. And that's the way I kept also I my show, you know, Love, Guns, and Freedom. I say, hey, I want to do exactly the same. That's the spirit of the show. Even especially if you disagree, I want you on. And, uh, and that's where we can maybe learn from each other. Because at the end of the day, I believe we always learn a little bit from each other. Even when we are completely opposite sides, I proved myself that I was wrong many times, or at least uh, I had the uh, wrong ideas by people. I mean, for example, you know, I had a 
one of my first listeners, Ronald O'Donnell, you know, California Democrat running for the state uh, Senate. At the beginning, just because I thought he was a Democrat, I thought, oh, my God, this guy is crazy. And then I was realized that he was, uh, you know, probably the best person I ever met. And, uh, you know. I remember that. I know. remember that interview. Yes. And many times he I mean, came on my show, many times. So my point is that I owe to Dave. And uh, every time I do a show, I always try to be honorable and faithful to the principles of, I think, Dave always had. And he always believed in freedom of speech, regardless whatever crazy idea we may have, but he always let us express ourselves. What do you remember about Dave? How did you met Dave for the first time? I'm curious. I never asked you that. How did you met Dave? Well, I used to be a regular listener on K-Talks uh -huh. back when Dave Mitchell was his partner on the air. Yeah. And then Dave Mitchell moved away after his house burned down. Yeah. He moved up north. Yeah. So Dave was on by himself. Well, I used to call in two or three times a day. Yeah. So one day I decided, you know what? I'm going to go down there and interview for that co-host position. Yeah. Wow. I so I, went, I found out where Tay Talks was. I went down there, and I and Dave wasn't there when I got there. His wife was, and Paul, uh -huh. his engineer, they were sitting there. So I went in and talked to them, told them, you know, that I'd like to come in there and, and try to be a co-host with Dave. Yeah. So his wife says, I'll tell him. So... uh I never really got to talk to Dave about it. Uh huh. So uh, I guess his wife told him about me. But what she told him was that guy is scary. And he <laughs> looks at me because you know I was a cop for thirty years. Yeah. I guess I have that piercing uh, <laughs> face. So I called in the, the next week on some issue, and as I'm finishing up, Dave says yeah. to the audience, or after I hung up, I'm listening on the radio. He says, that's my new co-host, Frank Costigan. Yeah. That's how I found out I was got, I got the deal. Wow. I had no idea. So I showed up the next morning, and I went there for eight years religiously. Wow, I didn't know that. And that way, how many years ago was that? I'm curious. Well, that was nine years now. Wow, wow, wow. And, you know, I remember how we met somehow because, you know, I live in, uh, of course, outside the the area that normally K Talks right. broadcast there's more you know if uh, let's say the signal is not very strong in Golden Valley. Even I used to listen to sporadically of course on the internet. But really when was the time that happened with the Moave County lawsuit, you know, the story with McCain, the town hall meeting and of course uh, all the situation that the county they lied to me, all this stuff. You guys and that was amazing, you know, I tell you it was one of the most beautiful thing. You guys you are the only really radio in in the county to follow this story to give me the opportunity to express myself and more important share the facts and uh, i tell you that was amazing i remember you especially you on the street with me with other people we were in front of sockwell office i mean that was incredible <laughs> that was fun that is an incredible journey and it was all about freedom of speech it wasn't about anything else it wasn't about democrats republicans was about, you know, these bastards, I mean, the former bastards at the county, now things have changed, at least better, when it comes to the issue. You know, they had this ordinance that they say that you cannot pass out flyers on the political flyers, even on the parking lot, okay? That's supposed to be something that, let's say, discussable. At the same time, you know, Senator McCain it was allowed to completely, you know, have a town hall meeting talking about his freedom of speech or whatever he wanted to talk about it. And the fact that they didn't have any ordinance in variety that you could do that, and they had to write it after I asked him what is the ordinance that they were lied to me when they denied me the right. So it was an amazing story. I don't want to go into details there. But that, for me, was the way we met. And I tell you, uh, you guys, you were the only station at the time. And I think even now, I mean, there is nobody else on the air does this stuff. Normally, they all kiss up to, to, to the political establishment anyway. Now, what do you think about, first of all, Really, in your opinion, I don't know your belief, you know, I don't know your faith, but where do you think Dave is right now? What, according to your belief, where is he gone? In the future or in the past? Heaven? Uh, uh, I think he's wherever the good people go, whether it be heaven or the future. Okay. But I think I think he's up there writing music and playing it. All right. That sounds and like I, a good thing. And I think when, when we're going to see some storm clouds with a lot of noise coming out of it, <laughs> I'm going to listen closely because I think I'll hear his music. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, you were pretty lucky that uh, you were able to see him one more time 
And uh, think about how many times it really does happen that you go to, to the hospital down in California and that you find next door to you, Dave, at the same area. I mean, it doesn't happen every day, right? I mean, you don't live down there, correct? Yeah. I mean, I was surprised when I found out he was in the hospital. Yeah. And I knew I was going down for an eye surgery, so uh, I stopped in. Yeah. But the one thing I felt bad about was was I felt bad when I left, mm-hmm. and I didn't get to go back yeah. because I could have squeezed in another visit. Yeah. But, you know, of course, I always thought there's always tomorrow. Yeah, exactly. And we found out there's not always tomorrow. And that's exactly what I was trying to bring at the beginning of, of uh, the this segment. You know, sometimes we take for granted. We think we're immortals. We think we're going to be forever. Say, you know, I'll see you tomorrow. Sometimes people leave the house and they're mad. Maybe they fight with their spouse or, you know, you're just mad at, at whatever, your boyfriend or whatever, at your mom, at your dad. And then you think, okay, let it out, make up. What if that's the last minute or the last time you can see him and say hi? Give him a hug. I mean, seriously, everything is important, but everything is so relative. After all, we are made of flesh and bones. And I'm not trying here to preach. You know, people, I'm not here. I'm a regular guy, and, you know, I'm the last person who can preach to anybody, for God's sake, okay? But seriously, think about it. We are here anytime we can be gone. And if you if you have the chance to know, let's say tomorrow you have the magic, uh, somebody give you the magic secret, okay? You have six days. Or let's say tomorrow morning you will be leaving this planet. I would try to say, oh, my God, this is a... I need to do the best I can to be the best person I can. And more important, I want to hug everybody I can when I walk around the street. I mean, seriously. I mean, how can you get mad? How can you get mad at somebody when you know that one hour you will be gone? Everything is so important, but everything is so relative. You think I care anymore about Obama or Bush or whatever, Trump? Screw them all. I mean, seriously. I mean, at that point, you know, I just try to be a better person I can. So that's what I'm saying. You know, sometimes we get lost too much in our... A daily life that we forget that there is a, a big other picture out there, and I think the problem also, you know, what is Dave? Excuse me, Dave, uh, Frank. Uh, we always look down. We forget to look up. If you look up, if you look from above, this planet it's a little, you know, little grain of sand. And if you look at the big picture of the universe, we are like not even ants. We are we are nothing. So it, everything must be put in perspective, in my opinion. What do you think? Am I too? Um, out of my mind, maybe, or maybe I'm onto something. No, that's that's a good uh, outlook. That's that's the perspective we all should have. You know, but, you know, as far as you know, giving people hugs and the rest of that. My daughter and I are very close. Uh-huh. Sometimes we have debates where that get a little bit heated. Yeah, but we always end those discussions with either a handshake or a hug. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I agree. I agree. Yeah, yeah, even if we're totally mad or angry or whatever, you know, and uh, it just makes it a lot easier. I agree. I agree. And, uh, you know, this show is recorded, of course, for the listeners. And uh, today what we are recording is, uh, I think, Wednesday. But of course, you will listen to this broadcast on Sunday. The afternoon, this is the final hour. You're listening to Love, Guns, and Freedom. And I'm not trying to preach to anybody, you know. I'm just saying, I'm just talking as a human being. Let's not forget that we are here for a limited time. And, and we never know. And, of course, you know, it can happen to young people. can happen to newborn. But normally, of course, when you are, your age starts to go up there, you know, for sure the statistics show you that normally older people die a little early, okay, than the, the young kids, okay? So... We always need to, of course, cherish our seniors, and especially our fathers, mothers. But at the same time, you know, I know that you're going to an hospital next few days. Not in serious, for what I understand, at least nothing that you don't know. But still, you know, I'm so glad that tonight you gave me the opportunity to at least talk to you. Because uh, I don't want to start to sound freaky, but I would hate the idea that I didn't have a chance to see you. Something happened to me. Forget about you. I'm not talking about you, okay? And we couldn't talk tonight. So I'm glad that... uh, we found the time tonight to talk about even just a Dave and you and how we met and everything else. Now, you got the floor. Anything you want to talk about it, you well, whatever you want. No, it's, we pretty well covered it. I will say this, though. Every day at the end of the day, you have to think back upon what happened and what you did during the day. 
And you have to say to yourself, did I love enough today? And then you say, did I laugh enough today? And then you still think, did I make the world a better place? At least our little world. And I think, you know, with love, guns, and freedom, love to me is the most important part of this. I agree. I agree. And I always say that, you know. Uh, it's funny because uh, when I envision the show, I could have called it, you know, guns and freedom. Great. But there is one part that is probably the most, not this problem, it is, I always say that the most powerful weapon against evil, it's love. And love is the fuel that can somehow give the energy, give the energy to, to the end, to the micro little thing to fight even as a David against Goliath. And I'm not talking just a physical fight, I'm talking about a spiritual fight. And, uh, and it's true. Because after all, love is our humanity. And that's why more and more the final hour, you know, of course, the first hour, you know, the show, we talk about freedom and, you know, and everybody got their political ideas. You know, I'm pretty strong about my ideas, even I have no parties, allegiances. But we get pretty serious into that. We are really planning hurt, okay? Then the second hour, of course, we talk about other very physical things. is guns, training. And, of course, it's also fun for me, but it's a serious matter. Final hour back to our humanity where we are all at the end we are all human beings and uh, if we forget that it's over it is over and I always say you know at the end whatever we do in life without love not only there is no flavor but there is no motivation I mean after all you know you go out you fight you work you, you bleed you know why because you want to come back home you want to take care of your family you want to take care of your kids that's also an act of love you know our lo life is a struggle you know, as much people can say it's great. Guess what? The moment you were born, what do you do the first thing, Frank, when you're born? Tell me. You cry. Am I right or wrong? That's right. It's pretty, it's pretty you know, I learned that pretty fast. I say, wow, we have, suck sometimes, you know. Life is not easy. I understand. Well, there are beautiful moments. Don't get me wrong. I enjoy it. But it's a challenge. You know, no, I don't care if you have millions, billions, or if you're just on social security. It's always something tough. Of course, when you got billions, maybe a little easier on some aspect. But still, trust me, they have their own problems. So, at the end of the day, there is one thing that we are here as a struggle, as a test. I don't know the all answers. I don't know why we're all here. But I know it's, it's not exactly just a, a simple, you know, uh, trip. It, it is a journey. And there are a lot of things that challenge us. But without love, I couldn't face it. Without love, I could even have a motivation. That's what I'm saying. That's why I say, you know, this is the hour of, of the show that I'm thankful to have somehow envisioned. And, and, uh, and at least we can celebrate life. And we can celebrate the life of our friends. And if we have to, you know, I, I don't even see death anymore as, 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 as something terrible or something sad. It's sad for us because we are here. But I believe when I die, I'm going to be for sure in a better place than here. This is for me, it's almost semi-L sometimes, I'm telling you. But regardless, I'm enjoying it. I try to do my best. Um, Frank. Yes. If you go when you go one day, how would you like to be remembered? And I'm not trying to put anything bad about it. But, you know, I like to, to have you on my show because I tell you, I always put this on the show for myself. How would you like to be remembered? Frank Ostigan. I, I give you the message in the bottle. This is the last 60 seconds, whatever you want to say. And this is your message you leave to, to posterity. Go ahead. Okay, first of all, I want to thank you, Luca, for uh, giving me the opportunity to come on and spread love and to spread the, the last moments that I shared of Dave Hayes' life. And, I, you know, I always look forward to debates and talking with you because, you know, we open each other's eyes in so many different directions. The secret to talking is learning to listen. And I think everybody that's out there that are listening now you got to listen to everybody, especially family members and friends, because everybody has a message, and sometimes we're so busy talking, we're not listening. We're always planning our next sentence for one-upmanship. Yeah. What we need to do is talk so and and listen, so that when you respond, you respond, you know, in the in the proper way. And like I said. At the end of the day, you've got to know, did I love enough and did I laugh enough? Did I help somebody else have a better day? Thank you, Luca. Thank you, Frank, and good luck for tomorrow, I'm sure, and I pray everything's going to be okay.
And guys, you're listening to Love, Guns, and Freedom. I don't go away. We have the final segment of the show. I got some news to share. And uh, thank you very much for listening. I really appreciate it. Don't go away. You're listening to Love, Guns, and Freedom. We look at that. Have you ever met someone on an online dating site and thought, wow, this guy is perfect for me, or she is simply amazing, only to find out they were hiding a deep, dark secret? They plan to vote for Hillary. <laughs> FreedomLovers.us was created for singles who want to exchange ideas and a love for freedom. People who are looking for solutions to create and defend freedom in the real world and at the same time getting that once in a lifetime chance to find their true soulmate. Whether you are interested in meeting your soulmate, making new friends, networking, or hanging out with that like-minded liberty lover, Visit freedomlovers.us. It's the first free dating site and community. So patriots, don't waste your time with other dating sites. Freedomlovers.us is the place where like-minded singles really click. Here we go back into the studio. You're listening to Love, Guns, and Freedom. We'll look at Zanna on KTalks 13, 40 a.m. That was Frank Costigan. I must tell you, um, this is becoming very personal for me, this show at this point. Uh, in the last few months, maybe even the last, uh, I don't know, since I started it, but more and more it becoming just more than a show. It's becoming almost like a journey, uh, a way that I can learn, also a, le- a way I can grow up, uh, and a way that also I can grow mostly not just knowing things uh, about politics, of course, and everything else we talk about, guns, but also spiritually. Because I tell you, there are so many things that I'm learning, and I, I hope to improve, because I'm telling you, I realize, you know, every one of us has limitations, you know, we have limitations. And um, the difference is how we handle these limitations. Do we, first of all, are we aware of our limitations? Sometimes we're not that lucky. Sometimes we're not that lucky. Sometimes we have nobody really that takes the time to let us know. And then when we know about our limitations, what do we do? Can we try, are we trying to improve? And this works for everything. Could be just for the, you know, uh, as I said, for the way you interact with others. Uh, could be your mom, could be your loved one, could be your son, could be your wife. Doesn't matter. So that's my point. And uh, in this case, you know, I tell you, this is the hour of love. You know, we have our own personalities. Everybody's different. And uh, it's sad when um, they are misunderstanding. And, and at that point, you realize really how... Uh, things can go completely out of the blue to a wrong direction with a special one. How do you handle that? Are you able to have, a, let's say, a normal communication? And the problem is sometimes, you know, there is something that breaks. Even when you try your best, there is like a little something that breaks the trust and it doesn't even give you the chance anymore to be looked at the same way they look at you before. And you feel bad because, you know, at the end of the day, you didn't mean to do anything bad. But you realize that maybe you broke that glass and, and there is no only way to do, to take it back. So I don't know. I don't know. I'm just uh, probably ranting a little bit. But all I want to say, there is so much to learn. In every day, it's an experience. Now, you know, interaction. Uh, we are made of, uh, of course, flesh, bones. We have a soul, I believe. I believe that, of course, at least for me, you don't need to believe it. And also, we have a heart. And the point is, you know, as human beings, we have emotions. And emotions sometimes means uh, that can be good, can be sad, can be happy, can be irate, can be jealous, can be frustrated. And they are very, one of the most powerful emotions, I think probably the most powerful emotion, it is probably love that maybe people say but that's not an emotion that's a feeling but that's part for me as also is an emotion because love also makes you feel makes you feel in different ways and when you don't have probably the same tune the same uh, let's say symphony and the same correspondence from the other side probably that love transforms in something that could be sadness or could be i don't know jealousy or frustration. So you see, that's pretty much a very powerful emotion, and probably I think is the most powerful. 
People say the most powerful emotion is jealousy. But jealousy for me it is just a result of 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 of, of love. So that's my point. Now I have here Mr. Steve Rubin from the station uh, asking me for something. Let me just read him back. Okay, almost there. Hi, Steve. So anyway, but that's my point. Anyway, so in this hour, the final segment, I want to talk about something normally I don't really go. And I'm not here doing Dr. Laura, Laura, or I don't know, some sort of a psychologist job. Like, you know, I'm just a regular guy. I'm going through things like every one of us. And sometimes even if they're not my things, I look humanity out there and I see how really how powerful are these emotions with, 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 with our interactions and by the way love and the way we feel also influence everything else so think about it you know when you have politicians out there or anybody that somehow interacts with our public life they're still human beings they still have their own personal dramas and you know Sometimes, you know, the way they are out there is also the way you are at home. If you're not happy at home, you're not going to be happy in public life, and you're going to be an ass probably, okay? That's what I'm saying. It's, it's, it's all connected. I really believe love it is the most powerful thing out there. Now, normally I don't do that very much, but once in a while I do some poems. By the way, I'm, I'm writing a new book. Uh, I, I'm sure you already know about my other book that is on, in, on Amazon. It's called Lyrics and Poems. That is a collection of, of course, uh, several type of style of poems. Um, mostly they're all my lyrics of all my songs. All the songs I wrote and published, about a hundred of those. But uh, um, Lyrics and Poems, of course, is mostly, as I said, is a final stage of, uh, of a project that I've been working for so many years. All my songs and also some of these poems that I put together. And they're different styles. They go from erotic to political to, I don't know, just philosophical. It's just kind of a little mix of myself. Uh, and, of course, you can download it on Amazon.com, Lyrics and Poems by Gianluca Zana for just $2.99. It's an ebook format. I think it's really nice, and I appreciate it if you do that. Now, my new project is called uh, Perfectly Crazy. Wow, what is that, Luca? Yeah, it's, it's my just little project. And uh, I wanted to do something that uh, it is more specific to a niche, okay? So it's going to be exactly about love. Love and uh, even just more than love. People say, what is more than love? Yes, because love has different colors. They have different type of, uh, let's say, um, density or depth, okay? So this is a call exactly perfectly crazy, erotic visions and love poems by Gianluca Zan. I know some guys out there probably are laughing, say, wow. You know, this show is supposed to be a guns and freedom. Yes, don't forget there is also the love part. And I know maybe many people out there, they don't listen to this part. Maybe I have more ladies than guys. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. But I don't care. This is who I am. And that's why I like this show, because I can do whatever I want. So anyway, uh, this book coming perfectly crazy. It will be ready probably next month. And uh, by the way, there is also forbidden erotic Italian phrases. Wow. <laughs> yes. I wanted to go crazy on this one. That's why it's called Perfectly Crazy. And, you know, I'm not in really, as I said, I'm not here to try to profess myself like, uh, call myself like a holy man or a saint or a perfect guy. No, I am not. I'm a regular guy, maybe a little more than the average. I don't know. But for sure, I, I am who I am. And I'm not ashamed who I am. And... Um, I know many people say, oh, my God, you know, you're not going to run for office. First of all, I couldn't care less to run for any office. And even if I had to run for office, this is who I am. I'm not ashamed. I, I, have, I feel emotions. I write emotions. Sometimes, most of the times, are my emotions. And that's it, pretty much. And I'm not here to, to hide who I am, okay? So anyway, let me think about a little bit, first of all, which poems I would like to read for you today. Because that's something I want to do. Okay, and um, as I said, this poem then they span from a time when I was uh, in my 16. Think about it, <clears throat> and they go all the way probably last uh, till yesterday. Okay, so I write every day, and I've been writing for years. But on this book project, I wanted to somehow create a complete niche for love and also erotic poems. And when I say erotic, this stuff it's PG 99, not 21. Okay, so. Just be sure. I may not read some of this stuff on the air, but I will try to read some, whatever the FCC allows it. Why? I think it's fun. 
Uh, seriously, I mean, we need some time to reconnect with our humanity, and I think part of our humanity is also our, let's say, fantasy, our erotic side. After all, love, you know, is supposed to be the salt of life, in my opinion. And let me, let me tell you, can be also, you know, a very powerful and negative force. If used uh, not correctly, love can destroy your life completely. Uh, at the same time, can give you the smile that you wake up every morning, no matter what type of bad day you're having, and you can be happy. And, you know, people say, oh, you know what, it's too much. I cannot handle it because the other side is terrible. Guess what? I understand. You know, I went through that for many years myself. Sometimes I said I'd rather to be completely alone, so at least, you know, I, I feel no pain. That's something worth it. It's worth to stay, for example, uh, in complete, let's say, lack of life, I would call. At least, you know, I think the Buddhists say that, you know, don't get involved in love because, after all, you can create, disturb your, uh, your, 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 your type of, uh, uh, you know, peace. But peace, the way they look at that, in my opinion, even I'm not an expert, of course, of their philosophy or religion, it's almost like, you know, okay, let's not leave, so we don't, we're not afraid, or let's not get out of the house, so we're not afraid that something's going to happen to us. Meanwhile, you're missing the best part of your life. That's what I'm saying. So it's a dangerous game, but I still believe that it's something that uh, it's worth playing, okay? So anyway, let's see what we got here, because uh, as I said, in this book is going to be probably about, let's see, um, wow, a lot, at least probably about 40, 50 poems, at least. Then there are, of course, at the end of the book, a little uh, funny thing that I call funny, but it's not. It's all erotic Italian phrases. People say, oh my God, why do you do that, Luca? Because I think it's fun. You know, I have a lot of friends of mine out there, they try to, you know, play Italian or just speak Italian for their girlfriend, whatever. If that can give you a little bit, five minutes of laugh, why not? Seriously, okay? For example, I like, um, I don't know, sometimes I like the ladies when they talk um, French or they talk, I don't know, Swedish, stuff like that. Um, it's, some, it's just something fun, okay? Don't get me wrong. All right, let's see, let's see, let's see. Because I want to try to keep uh, this... Uh, um, poetry today I share with you, kind of uh, PG-13, okay? That's my point. So let's see if I can find something that uh, uh, I can handle here on the radio. Uh, this is kind of uh, gently around your neck. Maybe it's that too much. Heaven. Let's do heaven. Heaven is fine. Heaven without you, it could not be true. Eternity without your smile, it, could be, it would be an exile. Life without your love would be just a curse. All I want is you, my heaven, my universe. That pretty much was something mild. So no drama there, no PG-21, okay? That's what I call the, the love side. Now, another love, okay? I love. I like this one, by the way. You know, I like them all, in my way, because they're all somehow personal and part of my life. And that's, uh, that's the way I write, okay? Sometimes I also write about things that people can see from 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 other way, uh, you, you know, they can see from outside. So I'm trying to do that. Okay, now I love. This is the problem, the poem. I love your beauty. I love your soul. I love your friendship. I love you whole. I love your eyes. I love your breast. I love your heads. I love your best. I love your peace, I love your pride, I love your honor, I love your wild, I love your words, I love your hair, I love your smile, I love your bear, I love your loyalty, I love your brain, I love your love, I love you insane, I love you, but you do not love me. Well, that was kind of interesting final end, as you can see. So, um, I think let's take, let's take a break, a few seconds, and then I go to the second part with more poems. But this is going to be, if you have children out there listening on the radio, turn the radio off. Okay. Still, I will comply with the FCC. So, you're not going to listen to weird phrases that the FCC, let's say, doesn't like. But, the images, 
that I will try to paint with the words may be a little strong for the average person. And of course, children should go to bed right now, okay? So please stay there, a little break, I put a little song, and I'll talk to you in a few seconds. You're listening to Love Guns and Freedom with Luca Zan, and this is the hour about love. Uno, due, tre, quattro. That was uh, Thinking of You. Uh, probably was one of my first songs that I wrote and published when I came to America. And that was, uh, the, the song was recorded in 1999 in Los Angeles. I remember like yesterday with my friend Simone. Wow. Time passed by. And yes, I was driving around with my car and uh, 
And I came out with this idea of this song, Thinking of You, and I was thinking about you. You know that. So now, let's go back to the poems. Before we close the hour, I need to give you what I promised. Okay? Um, hardcore, little more, let's say, um, poems that they are part of this book that I'm writing. It's called Perfectly Crazy. And it's Erotic Visions and Love Poems by Gianluca Zana. So, now let's go with the shortest poem I ever wrote that I think... Uh, I need to correct a little bit for FCC, okay? The poem is called Depth. I want to F you so deep that I can touch your soul. Da-da! That was it. That was kind of profound, um, seriously. I think it's a really good poem, by the way. It's very short, but think about it. It is not just what you think, you know? I want to F you so deep that well, I can touch your soul. It is not just about physical well, hopefully you understand what I'm trying to say. Now, let's go to another one that I really like, at least one of my favorite that I can say on the air, okay? Because I have other one even better, but this is something I can still somehow get away without using any words. Gently around your neck. Gently around your neck. Kisses and bites behind your back. I pull your hair while I lick your spine. Tonight I'm yours and you are mine. Gently around your neck. Kisses and bites behind your back. I hold you tight while you scream and smile. You feel me deep. You're wet and wild. Gently around your neck. Kisses and bites behind your back. Well, that was a... Uh, hopefully, you didn't freak out. Okay, guys. This is Luca Zanna. You're listening to Love, Guns, and Freedom, The Hour of Love. And, of course, that was just a little bit of a taste of my coming book of erotic poems. Hopefully, you like it. Now... I want to do the last one, and I promise it's going to be something special, okay? Let's see. Something that you don't freak out too much. Okay, this is not even a poem. It's just a little expression. Love is not fair. Your curves are the hills where I find comfort in moments of despair. Your lips are my water. Your breath is my air. Not is forever. Love is not fair. Okay, guys, I think for this Sunday we are pretty much done. I want to remind you this. Please support the show. There are many ways you can do it. You can go to www.zanna.us, my website, where you can find all my songs. I have more than 100 songs there. Of course, there is also the link for my ebook, uh, lyrics and poems. Uh, my, all my songs, you can get them for 99 cents each on Amazon or different websites. Doing so, you support the show. Now, as I said... I'm not perfect. I am uh, far from perfect. Probably I'm one of the most complicated human beings out there. But this is who I am. And one thing at least I think you can see in me. I always try to listen. I always try to say, I've done something wrong. I'm sorry. That's all I can tell you. I try. Because I don't think I have a really, I mean, a bad bone in me unless I have to. That means uh, I'm not here to hurt anybody. And, uh, and I'm sorry. With my own limitations, sometimes if I don't come out the right way, uh, I just apologize to you. That's all I can say. In general, this is not just about personal, just in general as a human being. So at least one thing I try always to do. Hey, I can improve. We all can improve. Or we all can get better. That's for sure. Okay? All right. Talk to you next Sunday. And hopefully we're going to have uh, interesting news to share. I'm sure we do. And at the same time, don't forget uh, Zanna Coffee. You can go to www.zannacoffee.com and support K-Talks. Seriously. This station is being great for many reasons, you know, and uh, when Dave Ace was here, he gave me the great opportunity. And it's not just about me, okay? Um, a lot of other people have a great opportunity at this station. And also, of course, uh, the new owner has been doing an incredible job, and I really appreciate Steve Rubin for what he's done uh, to keep the show uh, on the air, of course, and also to do what he's doing. I mean, he's doing an incredible job with the radio and relaunching it, and there is a new FM uh, radio that is a light right now also broadcasting the same show I think it's 104.1 104.1 in Bullhead okay God willing I will talk to you next Sunday ciao